come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're usually a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday night. Uh, yeah. with, well, tonight, this is the main event. This is the one that... This is the most listened to episode of the year, actually. Yeah. Way to put the pressure on us. Yeah. Now, right? <laughs> yeah. The best. You better perform. And you know, one worst movies <laughs> of 2019. We've done some really drunk versions of this, so it can only get better. That's right. Mm, that's well, first of all, before we get into that, let's. Uh, why don't we introduce uh, people to the internet radio superstars? Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And uh, what we'd like you to do real quick, if you can. Is go over to wherever you found us and give us a like, a star rating, or a review. Uh, also, follow along on social media. You can follow us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Uh, Twitter. At Sad Freak Show. Uh, you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. All of that stuff. Uh, you know, all the likes and the follows. It helps us like become the fastest growing podca- movie podcast in the world. In the world. It's a big world. Mm. That's right. I've seen as far universe. as we know, we are. I've seen the universe. The galaxy. A big world. Yeah. <laughs> and the galaxy. Yeah. All right, calm down. Hey, we don't know the podcast <laughs> we're, we're exists anywhere else. going on a Star Wars kick, so no. galaxy. Let me have this. Hey, <laughs> hey, do you know of any intergalactic podcasts? <gasps> Can we be the first? We're yeah, the yeah, first, the first intergalactic, intergalactic yes. podcast. They'd have to send us to like a planet. No, they just be more. I'll just like put us on one of the satellites. Sound keeps going on. Yeah. 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 Put so, like um, gold record. Let's go. Yeah. All right. So, we watched a lot of movies. We've talked about them on this show, but in the course of 2019, we've gone to a lot of movies. Yes. Um, and so, this is the show where we get to find out how we each uh, came down on the top five movies of the year. So, question for you. So, are we. Uh, so, I assume then we're going to. No spoilers. No spoilers. These are, are movies that people haven't seen. Mm-hmm. Oh, no spoilers? No, no spoilers. We've always done spoilers. No, no we not haven't. On these. <laughs> not on these. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because these are new movies. No, uh, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So, what was your criteria Shit. for coming up with your five movies? What I enjoyed the most, but also what I felt was like the most successful. Successful. So, like, it's a Venn diagram of those two things. You're not so saying financially like, successful. No, just... like successful in telling a story and like telling it well and. Gotcha. Uh, I'm all for the ones that uh, uh, made me feel something. Like, mm-hmm. it, usually m- a more intense feeling than yeah. other movies will. So. Yeah, if I left the theater or my home, whatever, if I left the movie feeling like I had an experience with yeah. movies. Yeah, if I leave going, Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I say Jesus at least twice during a movie, it's usually on this If list. I leave smiling or crying, those are both good things. <laughs> or severely disturbed. <laughs> or severely disturbed. Yeah. Well, I had trouble whittling it down to five movies this year. I don't know if it was just looking back over the list. I don't know if it was just like... <laughs> there weren't a whole lot of standouts. There wasn't. There weren't. Yeah. I mean, a lot of I, middle of the road stuff this year. So yeah. that's why it was like, maybe that's why things are jockeying, at least to me. Cause I mean, I, my criteria was like, I, I was looking at, so we're not saying that we're, none of us, it sounds like, are going for the objective best. No. Th- those created, wait, okay. Those know. lists are bullshit. They're just, there's no such thing as an objective. No, best if you're giving list. a top list, you're giving what you like, your yeah. favorites. Yeah. yeah. So these are our favorites. Yeah. Right yeah. Our favorites. Our yeah. favorites. I was going yeah. off of like, these are movies that A, I had a good experience with, and B, I, I have or will watch more than one time. And that we yeah. think maybe the listeners should watch too. Obviously, we wouldn't be talking about it if we didn't think they should listen I've, to it. One of my factors, because I've, I've had an issue with this. We were talking off mic about, I'm like, I, I will be the last one to go in this circle for our. Or for our f- first or our whatever in order we're going in order i'm the last one right i'm uh, still not know. sure Colin, are you going first colin's going first yeah. okay. i will go last i'm still not sure what my number five is <laughs> i have to decide that before we get to me because <laughs> i yeah because there are like we could we could talk about endgame everyone has seen endgame everyone knows about endgame but I really enjoyed that movie. Should I talk about that as my number five, or should I tell you about something that I saw that I'm not hearing anyone talk about? No, you know, it's your list. You talk about what you want to talk about. Yeah, it's your list. You talk about what you want to talk about. If Endgame is the one, Endgame's the one. Yeah, I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. Yeah, that's what I don't give a shit if it's been talked about for because like that came out way earlier in the year and it's been talked about to death. Okay, I guess we should say too, like it's okay to like a movie or not like a movie. These are just our opinions. Don't come at us and be all mad by we're not we're not sight and sound. We're not AFI, right, or, right, you right. know. 
Yeah, we're not so, putting, saying that these are going on the wall. Obviously, we have not seen every movie that's come right. out this right. year. Yeah. These lists are fluid and could change over time. Yeah, that's a good disclaimer because I'm like, I Mine think are this change year, next week. Yeah. I think I have seen <laughs> less of the new films than I have like maybe in any year past. I don't know. I missed like a lot. So this is of the stuff that we've seen. Yeah. So we yeah. may have missed a, a movie that you And just consider, how we're feeling today. Your yeah, opinion yeah, could yeah. change it's over time true. and it's okay for that your yeah. opinion to change. So do you want to, I can't remember what we did last year. Do you want to do, because uh, this may also like for, force you into a corner, Holly, do you want to do uh, like runners up? Do we want to do that or no? No. I, no. So I was going to do hard five. I was going to do an honorable mention. And that was it. No runners, just that one. No, because we're already doing best five and then the worst. That's yeah. already. Okay, something. so we're going I'm still going to say it before we. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm, I mean, we, if if you want to mention, like I was, I was debating between these two, and I went with this one. Don't talk about the other. No, one. I won't. This That's the thing. I'm just going. It's going to be honorable I'm, mention I was, this movie. I was going to say the same thing. Like what I was debating with. Like I'll tell yeah, you. I won't what my go to in detail. debate was, yeah. but. Okay, well, pretty much everything detail. below, I said I made uh, top 10, everything below three is all like up for grabs. So. Yeah, that's how I feel I when I make top lists. Like, well, yeah, once you get I past went a certain it. benchmark, it's like, I, went, I made this list like four or five times. I'm like, yeah. okay, do I feel good with this? Like, what if I change and, you know, I think my top uh-huh. three were always in the same place. Four and five, there's like this other ones but whatever i've been way overthinking this list for something i yeah. don't get paid to care about you know <laughs> like true. but this yeah. is our main event this is our super bowl right <laughs> this is it right here okay so we starting this off i think so colin all right number five number five i am going to go with uh alex Ajaz crawl uh yeah. crawl the nice. movie oh, the alligator nice. movie that's a fun mm-hmm. movie that is my honorable mention Okay. All right. So, yeah, because, I mean, there's, well, maybe you'll say the movie that was uh, right, you know, so there were like three. And I'm like, yeah. okay, let's go with Crawl. The reason I went with Crawl. It's really fun. I think it's that's it. It's like Crawl is a movie that it seems like used to be uh, released theatrically, like all the time throughout the summer. And now you barely get those fucking movies. And what I'm saying is it's like a, it is, I don't want to say a dumb monster movie, but it's just a, you know, simple uh, kind of little slugger of a movie that's yeah. out there kind of just punching its way into the theatrical marketplace, which, you know, you usually just don't get the, it's a yeah. fun horror movie. Yeah. When you know? movies like this you will usually be just be going like direct to VOD nowadays, yeah. then they won't put the money behind it to put it in theaters and promote it. Yeah. So this doesn't happen a lot. Yes. I thought that like Alex Uja, I actually thought like his career was over. Because he did uh, the, what was it, the something of Billy Drax or Hugo Drax or what the fuck Oh, yeah, Hugo, Hugo the, Drax. Yeah. No, yeah, Hugo Drax is, is from Mo- uh, that- Moonraker. It was something, but whatever. Something. I saw it, and it was like this kid who, you know, I, I don't know, it was not a good uh, film. And Horns, before that, like, oh, didn't right. go anywhere. So I am just, he, as a genre filmmaker, is still out there making pretty much specifically horror films. And they're usually, the thing you get from an Alex Aja movie is that you don't get in, like, you know, your Annabelles or something like that, is uh, he commits to, like, he knows that these are the horror moments. And so... When an alligator attacks somebody, it's going to fuck them up in a way that's like, oh, Jesus, you know? I really liked his piranha. Back when he did Piranha oh, 3D yeah. also. Piranha but, 3D was entertaining. Yeah. Uh, it was, it's the the ninth life of Louis Drax. Of Louis Drax, yeah. That yeah. sounds like a bad movie. I pity you it if you've seen it. sounds like a bad movie. Yeah. Yes. It was not good. It had Jamie Dornan from uh, The Fall. Oh, no, he was, uh, he was uh, the Fifty Shades. Fifty Shades. Yeah. Um, Hills Have Eyes, Mirrors. Yeah. Well, Mirrors was... But yeah, yeah, uh, Mirrors is not good. I mean, if you like uh, alligator movies, and we here at the Freak Show do, I, do w- I would recommend do. that you check out uh, Crawl because I mean, it's yeah. like a suspense thriller. It's you know, it's it's gory, like some mm-hmm. sh- people mm-hmm. fucking die, and there's blood and mm-hmm. yeah. there's limbs and shit. Yeah, and, and the it's CG fun. alligators. Uh, we finally got to a point where I'm like, yeah, you know what? They kind of look pretty good. They're not huh? bad. They're not bad. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see 47 meters down, but they, even from what I saw in the trailers, I'm like, those sharks look pretty good. So maybe we finally gotten to the point where animals, CGI animals in movies are like passable. Yeah. Um, Looks wise. They got to move right though. But, and they move yeah. right in this movie, I think. Yeah. But it's a claustrophobic movie. If you haven't seen it, we're selling you on it. It's uh, basically a, uh, uh, because of a hurricane in Florida, it traps a girl and her father in the basement of a house with uh, alligators. And that's really all you need to know. That's really all you need to know. It's a high concept. High concept, and it 
fucking cool. Yeah. yeah. What's her name? Uh, Kayla. Sc- Kaya Scar- Scarlario. Scarlario. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is she else? Has she been in? Moon. Was she? Yeah, she was. Well, I don't want to say because it's yeah. like a big spoiler for that okay. movie. I like but the Sam Rockwell it. movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a great Sam Rockwell movie. Okay, yeah. I mean, I liked her in it. I liked uh, Barry Pepper, and things. basically, it's a two-hander mm-hmm. between them for the most part. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, recommended. Crawl number five. Yeah, Sean, very nice. Um, oh, it's all so fluid. Uh, <laughs> all right, my number five is going to be. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I don't know. That before choice. that, um, Sean, what's your be, number five? It's gonna be Jojo Rabbit. Okay, there you go. Number five is Jojo <laughs> Rabbit. Um, uh, directed and uh, written, uh, or um, what, what do you call it? Um, it's adapted from script. adapted, yeah, from, adapted by yeah. uh, Taika Waititi. Yeah. Um, you know him from uh, What We Do in the Shadows, yes. Thor Ragnarok. Yes. Uh, what's well, uh, some of Eric's uh. Was it Eric's secret show or what was the thing that they? No, they did um, Flight of the Concords. Flight of the Concords, mm-hmm. yep. Uh, and uh, Hunt for the Wilder People and uh, a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. It's doing the new Thor and all that stuff. Um, but I think that this was a uh, uh, a very good and very funny satire. Um, if you've seen the the uh, trailers or anything for it, you know it's a satire about Nazis. And what's more fun than watching movies about in this day and age? Uh, when we're so, um, uh, when you can get so upset by watching all the news and all this stuff nowadays, to watch a movie where you've got the obvious bad guys on screen and then you can, uh, uh, you know, send them up, satirize them. Um, and he does it so very well in this movie. He plays Hitler in that movie. He right? plays yeah. Hitler in this movie and it's fantastic. Um, every and all the actors in the movie are doing amazing jobs. Sam Rockwell is, I think, like, he's like the ace of the movie. Everything he says is hilarious. The freak show notoriously. On the Sam Rockwell train long yes. before anyone else. I think so. <laughs> we were on board way before so. three billboards, so you guys can also get it. Yeah. He's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, Scarlett Johansson is like doing really good in this movie, too. She's uh, uh, surprisingly, like, she's good. She's the mother in the movie. And she's always good in, like, yeah, when so they give her good dramatic. Surprising she's good in yeah, something, yeah, yeah. isn't she always, like... No, they just, yeah. they turned her into an action movie they did. hero. I haven't and seen her in, like, something meaty in a while. Yeah, But this yeah. is her year for, like, meaty good stuff. Um, but she does well in this. Everyone's like performing top notch. Um, I laughed a lot. It's a smart movie. Um, it's kind of it's a heartfelt movie as well. Um, I really enjoyed this one this year. So Jojo Rabbit is my number five. Okay. Mm-hmm. My number five is The Mandalorian. What? It is better structured, better written, better directed than most movies Wait, I've seen this, this year. This is cheating. Is it's, this cheating? Uh, I, I, is there rules about there not being TV shows? Sean wants to do add honorable mentions and all this other stuff on the fly. This is movies. My number five is The Mandalorian. Okay, if The Irishman runs for three and a half hours, The Mandalorian's at like four and a half right now. Cheating. So if you can make a three and a half hour movie on Netflix versus a four and a half hour TV Oof. show that I think actually works as a movie. If you watch know, it all can we disqualify once. a member of the podcast from saying the rest of their movies? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> movies. I say movies, but uh, we're in the Wild West yeah. now. So Michaela's in the, like, the best entertainment experience of the year. I, I enjoyed watching The Mandalorian more than I enjoyed watching most movies this year, and I think more people should watch The Mandalorian than a lot of the stuff that came out Okay, this but year. we're disqualifying video games, right? Are we drawing the line at video games? Yeah, where's the yeah. line here? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Video, yeah, video games is the line. <laughs> Resident Evil 2 is pretty great. Yeah. I know. Resident Evil 2, number five. Okay. <laughs> I, I wouldn't care. If you did that, I would not care. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> um, a I, shocking, a shocking pick. Yes. I, yeah. I saw John Favreau speak a couple years ago at a conference I went to, and he talked a lot about Chef and like the passion in his eyes. We talked about making that movie was delightful to see versus some of the other things he's worked on. And so like to see him like see The Mandalorian come together and like see him show run it and write it and direct it and and also give like women and people of color their first chance ever at directing anything Star Wars Wars related is awesome and I think it it like episode to episode flows seamlessly even the episodes I don't care for as much are still so good it like it really like I have that Star Wars love for it which is weird because there's no it's not force based there's so many things that are just like distant from the Star Wars I know but it works so well it's so well done it is a hundred million dollars so it has the budget of a big budget movie so it like for all intents and purposes the Mandalorian is a movie to me and I fucking love it and I cannot wait I think that 
with how the fan base has been reacting to the most recent Star Wars properties, I think that going forward, they're going to look to the Mandalorian and see what it did successfully. And that's going to shape the rest of the Star Wars properties we get. They honestly, I don't think they expected it to take off the way it has. If they had, they would have had baby Yoda merchandise in production, but they don't have any, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I think that they, I think they were, I think they were cautious because I think they expected everyone to fall in love with Porgs after the last Jedi and no one did. And no one bought that merch. And so they just kind of like dialed it back. And I, I honestly don't think they expected the Mandalorian to succeed at I don't think they all. thought it was going to be a meme like this yeah. for sure. Yeah, and it's, it's well, a I cultural mean, moment if, right now. If they're so. pumping $100 million into it and it is the flagship show on the new Disney yeah. Plus, I mean, they're expecting that you know there was going to be a buy-in to it. But yeah. the thing that it restores to, to Star Wars is kind of like the idea of the hero with the code. I mean, he's got a very yeah. clear, you understand kind of who that guy is, even mm-hmm. though he, it's basically a cut of... Uh, uh, the man with no name, or so yeah. it's yeah. very western it's, it's or samurai. It's Lone Wolf and Cub, also. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Siege, our Shogun Assassin episode, yes. or, yeah. our, or or uh, Baby Cart, Baby Cart and Peril. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it is it literally is that, and like. I, I I had the sense it was going in that direction, but week after week, like there was a whole episode that is basically seven samurai cutting mm-hmm. down into one. Oh yeah, episode. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. I was telling my nephew, I'm like, yeah. oh my god, they're doing the Magnificent Seven uh, right now. <laughs> and I think Cara Dune is one of my favorite new Star Wars characters ever. I mean, look at the caliber of people you have in the show: Verna Herzog, Carl Weathers, uh, uh, Pedro Pascal, Gina Carano, uh, Ming Na Wen, uh, Amy Sedaris, randomly. Uh, they, you, Bill, they Burr. Get Bill Burr, Burr right, yeah. Bill Burr, um, Clancy Brown, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you they know, just show up as like McNulty for an yeah. episode, right. uh-huh. yeah, yeah. They show up for an episode and they're gone. It's it's great. You're I doing love a it. favor to somebody or something. Yeah. So yeah. number five, The Mandalorian, Holly. How many sets of credits are there in The Mandalorian? There's a bunch in there, I think. Oh, more than a movie. Mm-hmm. No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number five, I. Uh, I was. I've been debating. I've, I've been debating back and forth. I, I, I mean, I really did enjoy Endgame a lot, and that's been wavering on my my list. Um, and you know, we all just went and saw Rise of Skywalker, and I really enjoyed that, and that's been wavering on my list. But I think I'm gonna go with uh, a movie called The Highwaymen. Ah. Uh, it was on Netflix with Kevin Costner, Woody Harrelson. Did you see it? I haven't see seen it? it. No, I haven't seen it either. I loved it. I yeah. haven't really heard anyone talking about it, and I really enjoyed that movie. It is very much a western. It is it, cool. It, is it a modern day? It's well, it's it's like um, mob, isn't it? It's, mob the, era? it's the detectives who caught Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. Oh. And but it's Ooh, cool. It is a western through and through. It feels. Uh, it, it's got that wonderful feel. So it's a little slow paced, like a western, but it's beautifully shot it's so gorgeous and it it has a fresh angle on this famous story you know we all have heard bonnie and clyde and we've seen bonnie and clyde but this is solely about like you barely see bonnie and clyde in the movie like that you do see them but it's it is about the detectives who hunt them down and it's it's so wonderfully it's so wonderfully written the characters are very they're very uh dimensional they've they've got a lot of depth to them but they're really simplistic um it's you know kevin coster's the straight lace like cop doing his job you know Woody, Har- woody harrelson has the the comedic vibe but they have such great chemistry together and it it it's like it's it's a buddy cop without being a buddy cop film like like i said it's a western um and it's it it gets it gets really in depth with these characters and these like specific moments that just make you feel something like there's a fantastic moment when they're they're in their hometown and Kevin Costner's character is having a conversation with Clyde's father and he has this moment they're they're both sharing these really intimate stories with each other even though the man knows that he's hunting his son they're sharing these really beautiful intimate stories with each other just about their own lives like Kevin Costner shares a really personal story that you know he's never told anybody and it's just really deep and intimate and it's and there's this moment when he looks at him and he's like I don't think you're hearing me sir I want you to catch my boy and it's just like heart wrenching mm. it's it's amazing and there's these these moments of like humanity that are really disturbing like like at the end they're towing the car through the town after they've been caught obviously we know they get caught I'm not that's not a spoiler. God damn it, Holly. we know we know <laughs> we know um but they're towing the car through the town. After At least they got all, captured alive. It's been all shot up, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And there's just hordes of people. And it's just this disgusting moment that everyone's just like pawing at the car. And Woody Harrelson and Kevin Costner are just like 
thoroughly disgusted by everything they're seeing. You know, it's just, they're like, where's the humanity right now? This is disgusting. And I don't know, there's just some real depth to it. And I'm surprised that people aren't talking about it. I thought it was a really fantastic movie. You said it was a Netflix movie. movie? It's a Netflix movie. That's why people aren't talking about it. I know. I know. <laughs> it did have a small theatrical release, you know, uh, some in a few theaters. But yeah, it's a Netflix movie. I think it's fantastic. I think you should check it out. Highwaymen. Uh, Netflix. Yeah. Both Why the greatest. So? Well, I mean, it's great that you know movies like The High Women, which didn't get financed by a major company, do get to get made. But at the same point, it's like they come out, and then a week later, something else has come out, or three more things have yeah, come out, and true. you know they get buried. So I mean, it's, it's great true. that you saw it. That's yeah. I guess the thing. It's like I'm almost. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if tonight we go around the table and like you know we all pick completely different movies because yeah. that's the landscape. You know, it's like everybody kind of you migrate toward the thing that you're interested in. And, uh, you know, there's so much stuff out there. You just can't possibly see it at all. It's true. All right. Number four. Colin. <clears throat> um, okay. Four. All right. No, I mean, I guess I can defend this movie. <laughs> no one's attacking you. No, I know. But uh, yeah. like. I feel like you got to put something up. If I feel like. Yeah. I feel like when you're, you, when you're choosing the best movies of the year. Right. <laughs> it's like, hear me out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I had a great time at this movie, and I think that uh, in hindsight, it's going to go down, at least to me, it is one of the best action movies of the past, like, 10 years, and that's John Wick Chapter 3, oh. Parabellum. I know, you're saying a John Wick movie? I knew this was coming. Did you? I knew it was coming somewhere. I thought about it on the way here. I'm like, I think uh, Colin talks about John Wick enough. I think yeah. Part 3... Well, it's going to be in there. You guys the, don't like part two, right? You I like, do not like part two. Kyle and I are um, in the <laughs> minority that part two sucks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, let's say that. Yeah. Like, I didn't. Okay. So, John Wick, the first one, like, kind Great. of just Excellent came out movie. of nowhere. It's one of my best of the decade. Yeah. I mean, it is a fantastic movie that, like, reestablished Keanu Reeves as, like, you know, a superstar again since The Matrix, probably. It's his best uh, role. And it's like, these. he's a guy who, like, I mean, he doesn't say much in the movie, right? But uh, that first one, the first one probably was the one with the most heart, and it was so also probably the most like sad. down to earth of the you know. But it like <laughs> yeah. it took uh, it because I think the director of all these, his name is like uh, Chad Stal Staleski or Stal something. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that, but he was a former stunt man, I think, and then switched over to doing uh, movies, and so he wants to do these action movies using crazy stunts, and the stunt work has gotten significantly more uh you know refined crazy daring uh exciting as the films have gone on it's a two packs it all at the back end mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the problem two spins its wheels world building for like half the movie it's, oh yeah that's the worst part of that movie but three starts at like you know cranked up to 11 and stays that way for like 40 minutes which is just it takes your breath away uh the action um, you know, I mean, it's like we see action s scenes in all these movies uh, all the time, you know, go to the, the cinema and you see stuff, you know, pretty much every week. It seems like there's big action scenes, but they all, you know, to me, even watching the new Star Wars movie, there's a bunch of, you know, things exploding and people crashing into things. But I am keenly aware and I can't get it out of my head that like basically we are looking at, you know, people in a green room being tilted around on a gyroscope. Uh, the John Wick movies, kind of like the James Bond movies, you know, uh, and the Bourne movies. Uh, tries to do like real physical hand to hand uh, combat. It's kind of a ballet in that in that way, mm. where it's like this is you're looking at athletes pretty much at the peak of their game being challenged to do crazy stunts. Well, the Mission Impossible movies would be the other, one. Um, but this kind of takes it to like this turbocharged like next level bar. Uh, I haven't seen anything. I would say like the the best one of the best action movies uh, of the past, uh, you know, whatever ten years or so, was a movie called The Raid, and then its sequel, The Raid Redemption. I'd put John Wick in there as a contemporary of those. It's like if you like those movies, uh, if you haven't seen those, you go check out you know The Raid, Raid Redemption. Uh, but the John Wick, especially Chapter Three, fits right in there. And I'm saying there's Mad Max, right? Fury Road, you know, is like the best. One of the best action movie of uh, yes. probably the decade. 
but I put this as uh, maybe maybe second place. I don't know. It's, I was really impressed by it. It's so much fun watching this movie. Big smile, ear to ear the whole time. Uh, the world building is still going on, but I mean, it was like I, it was contained enough that I dug it. And, Did uh, they at least cut back on the gold doubloons in this one? Yeah, all over the place like uh, there in the second one. <laughs> there's all sorts of you know trinkets and this oh, and that. Great. So I mean that's still there, but it balances it out with there's more set piece action scenes that are jaw dropping. Good. More often, so uh, yeah, that's a that's a you got to see John Wick three Parabellum. Am I the only one who saw this? Yeah, I didn't I've see. I've never it. seen a John Wick. Movie. Neither have I. Mm-hmm. I, that Jeebus. surprises me that you guys haven't seen any of them. I, I have one sitting in my room somewhere. Well, you got to start at the, at the beginning and work yeah. your way up, yeah. I think, because it's me, all in continuity. He gave me part two. Yeah, don't watch don't that, watch first. that no. one first. No, yeah. no, no, we tried. You watch, won't we understand tried what's tried watching the first one one night, and I, we were all just, I was just too tired. To I am, so. I am actually surprised with the popularity mm-hmm. that, that, that none of them. Okay, all right, it's come out too quick. I'm just like, oh wait, there's another one. I didn't even watch the first. Aren't they like two years apart? Whatever. John Wick Chapter Three Parabellum. Which I think means against all enemies. I'm not entirely sure, but there you go. You should see it. There you go. Sean, what's your number four? Can you imagine just Colin staring at a screen like... Uh, that's pretty much... I was laughing for, for two hours. Oh, yeah. Laughing? And, and you laugh like, at the movies? the crowd, like, I watched... Colin laughs when people get murdered with knives. That's how these movies are, <laughs> You though. are correct. Like, the John Wick movies, because it, it's, it's so the, ridiculous. Right, yeah. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. He can kill people with a pencil. A Take book. out five guys with a book. A book? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. I heard about the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's great. Okay. There you go. Crowd pleaser. There it is. This is where Sean's like, and then I saw this artistic drama. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, okay. I, uh, well, all right. Uh, my number four uh, was a little movie called Lords of Chaos. Oh, fuck. That was I, that was like my number 10. Oh, yeah? <laughs> but it was on my list. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I saw this movie um, a little earlier this year, and uh, holy shit. Yeah. Like, it, is, it is rough. It is, I think, fantastically acted. Um, it is the story about the uh, formation and we'll say like career of the members of the Norwegian black metal band Mayhem. Members whose names uh, include Dead, uh, Euronymous, uh, there's uh, Varg. Yeah. Varg is the guy who comes in. Um, uh, Necro We're- Butcher. <laughs> Um, Hellhammer. Were they the band that had the album cover that was yes. the skull? This that, is the story. Okay. Oh, this is okay. the story gotcha. of that. Okay. And it is fucking fascinating. Yeah, it's the beginning gotcha. of Norwegian black metal and all the church burnings and stuff yeah. like that. that yeah. This is where that came from. Gotcha. That kind of nihilistic yes. worldview. And for those of you who don't know what Michaela was just talking about, mm-hmm. um, they released an album that had um, their cover was a picture of their former frontman who had recently uh, who had killed himself, mm-hmm. shot himself in the head. And uh, Euronymous took pictures of the de- posed and took pictures of the dead body. Yeah, because that's what you do. Yeah, You're like yep. when you see your friend dead, he's been said like that's the, what their whole like worldview was. Yeah. So his first instinct was to take a photo of it. Yes, to post and him he on made bed. jewelry out of pieces of the guy's skull. Yes. Yep. <laughs> It is. Well, these are rough. serious, like yeah, yeah, black metal, hail Satan kind oh. of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. The movie is rough. Uh, there is su- like uh, it, uber violent. It is. It is uh, uh, graphically depicted violence. Um, uh, uh, there's suicide and murder. Um, the whole story about uh, they they form mayhem. Um, and there's another guy who's like a really big. This is Varg, who's like a really big fan of theirs and tries to get him with the group. Um, and, uh, Rory Culkin is, uh, um, Euronymous, the, the leader of, uh, Mayhem. Um, and he does a fantastic job. It's weird in that, uh, a choice made for the movie was that everyone would go, would have their normal accents. So it's a bunch of guys like talking with American accents, but it, yeah. it is, they are in like, you know, Norway and Sweden and all that mm-hmm. shit. So it takes that creative choice for whatever reason. But, um, uh, it is. Uh, it, w- it was a fantastically disturbing movie to me. Uh, I don't know why I was drawn to it. My friend at work recommended it to me. He's like, "This movie is fucked up," and he was not kidding. It's uh, directed by one of the guys I think who was in the band. Like he ended up so. becoming like a music video director and yeah. an author. I think he wrote the book Lords of Chaos. Yeah, 
I'm not so sure if you wrote the book, but he directed there's, the film. There's there's connection there, yes. Have you um, ever seen or heard of a documentary called uh, Until the Darkness Takes Us? Um, It sounds familiar, but I don't think I've seen it. You might want to check that yeah. out, because that's like the true, you know, Ooh. like, yeah, all about that era and that story. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, um, black metal. I actually like black metal. You like black metal? It was. I w- I didn't mind like listening <laughs> yeah. to what was in the movie. I'm like, all right, this, this is cool. I can dig this. Um, yeah. But it's it's kind of it's that whole scene during this. When was this? 1990s and yeah, it's an early 90s. Early 90s. Think, yeah. So that whole early 90s scene. But you know, in Norway and black metal dudes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a fascinating movie, but it's very disturbing. Um, but but also yeah. funny. But also very funny. Um, and yeah, Rory and touching. Of, it's sure. a touching movie, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, in certain parts. I mean, yeah. I also like Rory Culkin's character. Like his <laughs> everything that happens, he decides was because of like, yeah, it's because I urged him to do it that he did it. <laughs> like him taking uh, credit for all the things that happen, yeah. which is uh, I like. It's funny. It's hilarious throughout the movie. Um, but yeah, it was. I thought it was very uh, entertaining. Uh, anyone who sees this and and comes back to me and just like you're fucked up, Sean, to find this entertaining. Well, it's. Um, uh, I did. Um, I thought it was very good. Uh, I I definitely recommend that you all go seek out Lords of Chaos because I had a quote unquote good time with it. It made me feel like I had an emotional response to this movie, um, and that's what I was looking for with this. So, Lords of Chaos, my number four, Michaela. My number four is Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise uh, of Skywalker. Get the yeah. fuck out! Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. You were like last year, like or last week. What if it's on there? <laughs> Surprise! Uh, yeah, I I so. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars is such a part of my emotional core of of a person that Do you have a Star Wars tattoo? No, not yet. I'm surprised. I know. I was thinking about that. I just can't. There's so many things. Yeah. I can't decide on the thing. Yeah, galaxy of things. Yeah. So, but Babu like, Frick. yeah. It, 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 it honestly, you know, <laughs> you can think, get run on the back. Do you guys think neck, I would like go viral if I got if I got if I was like the first person to get like a Babu tattoo, would I go oh, viral? Sure. If I did it like you tomorrow. Right. <laughs> oh my God. Cause there's always like baby Yoda is taken. Like there are baby Yoda you know tattoos what? here and there. If you're I have a potential a, hot take. Yeah. I like Babu Frick better than baby Yoda. Babu Frick does. Yeah. Things. Like, you know, and he talks. Yeah. He does things like yeah. he, he, he gets shit done. Yeah, you know? Wait, um, we're on number four, right? Yeah. Oh, so you are hardcore Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. My bottom two picks are Star Wars. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit. Um, I mean, I went to Star Wars Celebration earlier this year, and that really like, I I didn't lose my love for Star Wars, but being around that many people that love Star Wars and have no shame about what they love about Star Wars mm-hmm. is really powerful, and actually kind of like reignited my love for Star Wars. Like, there are people there that love the prequels and don't give a fuck that other people think they're bad. Like, saw so many Darth Maul like t-shirts and leather jackets and stuff like people like it's it's crazy oh, to be at a, a convention yeah yeah it's just crazy to be at a convention of that size that's for one property you know i i go to a lot of comic conventions and horror conventions but this is like one franchise that gets its own convention that's insane and i mean you go to celebration and they have this giant mural that is the entire timeline of star wars that stretches like over 100 feet and it's like this really intricately painted mural that goes over the whole history of star wars and like and like they had the end of it covered oh, yeah. in black for the last movie because they didn't want you to see anything from it and like I don't know to sit in front of that is like really humbling and kind of emotional to see this whole journey like right in front of you and like this is the like I know it's not the end it's never the end with Star Wars but like it is a bookend for now at least and it's not a perfect movie it has a lot of problems but it checks a lot of boxes for me personally um, I I think I speak for a lot of people when I say like if you grew up really liking Leia to know she had a oh I can't say it to know that she <laughs> does things in this movie that you've always wanted to see happen is very satisfying very fulfilling um i don't care if it's fan servicey i liked it and i think it's worth watching and i think that it's okay to sometimes just get lost in a movie and enjoy it and not care what anyone else thinks and for me that's star wars so yeah. holly i agree with that I, I really had a hard time not putting it on my list but i just watched it so i <laughs> was not prepared <laughs> um my number four is a movie that recently came out uh, called Knives Out. Uh-huh. I was on my. Yeah. That's another one I had. On <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, this feels like that was at least in concept. <laughs> I think and, that was that was jockeying for my crawl. Yeah. yeah. All right. <clears throat> I really, really enjoyed Knives Out. It's a classic whodunit, and it's you know, that ugh, I love a murder mystery. It's mm-hmm. like a modern day Clue. It's just it's so enjoyable. You know when um, they were saying that there hasn't been like a murder mystery on screen like this in a while. 
did, did that like i mean because they're saying that but i'm like yeah. what they, i mean there was the hateful eight i suppose was like maybe the last i mean i said that wasn't specifically an agatha christie yeah. murder on the orient express kind of thing yeah you know? but it feels like we've had these movies like you and i kind of talked about this before i think it's because we've had like variations like you know we've we've had the culture that likes the the murder mystery but we have like we've we've had Sherlock and we've had mm-hmm. other things that kind of yeah. feel like it, but we have but we haven't had other than like Murder on the Orient Express. Right. It was probably the last one that was what three years ago now. Yeah, you I know? think they're making Death on the Nile, but I yes, mean those are, are still yeah. like they're all. Yeah. Uh, I suppose that was the difference in this one. This one's a contemporary movie, like very yeah. contemporary. And this not, is modern day. Yeah, yeah. It still very feels like wrong. though that the each one of the people of the family could have their one of their own little like those clue little character posters that pops right? up. Did they not person? do that for that? I think they did. Yeah. Everyone had a separate poster when they were releasing them digitally online, but it uh, wasn't too wasn't too stylized. But everyone kind of had their own separate yeah. little thing. Because this, this told you who ensemble they were. cast is fan fucking tastic. They're very good. I love this ensemble so much. Chris Evans was amazing. <laughs> I loved Chris Evans in this. Jamie Lee Curtis continues to be the badass bitch I want her to be. I just love her so much. Oh yeah, she's good. Tony Collette can do no wrong in my <laughs> opinion. I. I, I love I love this cast and Daniel Craig. I'm sorry, he was such a wonderful Southern sleuth. Like I I love I, I don't know. I, some people say that they don't love his his accent. I think it's fantastic. I think it's it's hilarious. I I don't know. I it's love even it. more extreme than uh, what he did in uh, Logan Lucky. Logan yeah. Lucky. Yeah. yeah. It so is. That's like that's what he can Solid do. Late. Yeah. Because <laughs> this was like this was like that like rich Georgia accent, yeah, you know? Like, I have eliminated no suspects. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for so, an English guy, like it seems like good. sometimes, you know, if they have uh you know, like sometimes they have a problem with like yeah. American accents, but to be able to he can do southern yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know for, pretty well. Yeah, and for that part it's it's so perfect to have it that like Georgia accent. It just works. Um and um What do we say what the movie's about? Everybody knows. Yeah, it's it's about I mean, cable yeah. knit sweaters. <laughs> Did really y'all buy stock in cable knit sweaters after this movie? Came I have out? a couple because <laughs> apparently it went up. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, it's the classic. You know, head of the family dies, and you know, it's the under suspicious circumstances. under suspicious circumstances. Who killed him? Did anyone kill him? It's, in the old the, country house. Yes, the, big the country, mansion. Yeah, the we ma- talk, yeah, the yeah, set yeah. piece of this movie is a fantastic mansion. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Like, mm. give me a murder mystery in an old mansion, and I am happy, girl. Like, I I love that setting. It always works for me. Um, there was a lot of precision in the details of this movie that I think flowed really well because I I, I I think that it it could have been. A slow movie, but I thought it was very, it was well paced. Like it, it had my attention the whole time. Mm. Um, but the details were very, were very well thought out. Um, I think Ryan Johnson did a great job in this. I was a little bitter with Ryan for a while mm-hmm. for <laughs> obvious reasons. But I think he did a really good, great job with this. Yeah, it, this is it, playing to his strengths. Yes, it really was. So. It really was. I wasn't really surprised by any of the plot reveals, but. Mm. Um, it was still executed in a manner that I thought, um, even though it didn't, it didn't feel too predictable. Even though it wasn't a surprise, it didn't feel too predictable to me. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. I had a good time with it. Um, what, what was the girl Marta? What was her name? Was her name the actress? Anna, Anna de, de Mar. De, yeah. Anna, what is her name? She was in Anna de Arma. That's yeah, it. Yes. she's in yeah. Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and she was in she's in the uh, new Bond, the new James she Bond. Is, yes. Yeah. I thought she was delightful. She's great. Her character oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's is awesome. so wonderful. I was, yeah. And it's very, like, she's got an emotional, like, Like that innocence core she brings it. to it. Yeah. Like, it's, oh, it's such a great character. And the tick, which we won't reveal we won't here, reveal but she's got a tick. Her tick. Which is fucking oh, yeah, hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hilarious. Yeah. It's hilarious. But yeah, I, re- I really enjoyed Knives Out. It's a great movie. Yeah, it's sure. a crowd pleaser. It yes, is. Yes, very much so. Knives Out, number four. Yeah, it definitely deserves to be in a top uh, top five list. I yes. So. Did you happen to see what uh, they were showing some of the ways that the uh, cinematographer and gaffers were lit? scenes for the movie and so they had special rigs Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of characters in the movie who wear glasses yeah and so they wanted to uh and they were purposely getting the reflections of everything but so there's light kits set up that have um uh like it's like the the light was coming in from a window so they have Mm -hmm. 
a window pushed in on them with a light right behind it hmm. so that when you do get the reflection it looks like it's coming from the window but oh, that's just the light set up like yeah. right over the camera and everything and they would do that for all the shots with yeah. the glasses and everything that's awesome. it's like little details that they're just like that's got what I mean. locked there, down this movie's well thought out yeah. like there's a lot of really great details about this movie mm-hmm. well just even like mysteries because I always wonder like where do you start when you're trying to write one of those yeah. things you know do you start like what I always want every movie start I guess it's like where what was the initial idea that you thought of you know and ryan johnson i think like whenever he does his little you know puzzle box movies like brick obviously is a private detective movie yep this is the uh you know agatha christie uh movie and what would you call looper it's not really a i mean but it's twisty in time so it's kind of revealing it's a time heist yeah yeah and so it's a heist movie i suppose but it's it's still there's things to be revealed you know throughout the movie yeah yeah uh wow we're on number three already we're yep. moving number through three. this like really fast we are that's because we all have different movies yeah maybe usually we've we've come across ones where we've it's been similar picks uh and we've discussed them more at length now it seems it's pretty varied and mm-hmm. what movies uh kind of float in our boats yeah here. i guess all right well uh number three uh was uh, not a good uh feeling that I had at the movies. Oh. But it was uh, an experience. It was uh, Ari Aster's Midsommar. Mm-hmm. Uh, which even though, like, okay, so here's the thing, I guess, that, I mean, I'm going to mention a movie, which is, uh, it's not really spoilers, I don't think, at this point. Either you know what this is or you don't. But, mm. uh, I mean, there's been a lot of comparisons to this movie on The Wicker Man. Yeah. Um, it's like the Swedish Wicker Man. Um, but the... So it's a, if you don't know what it is, it's a, a group of uh, college friends uh, go to Sweden for a, uh, to, you know, hook up with this, um, like, um, I don't know, it's a pageant or something that's happening in this it's little a commune, it's a, little festival, a festival. Yeah. festival. But the it's main dynamic of it is that there's a girl who experiences a, a, a loss, a, you know, a personal loss at the beginning of the movie. A and, heavy and fucking trauma. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. I mean, that was like, Jesus. yeah, one of the most shocking things I think that An I R.E.S. saw this movie year. that's based around trauma? Yeah. Can't yeah. imagine that. Well, this is what this guy does. I mean, yeah. he's got a lock on this kind of, uh, you know, because uh, he did Hereditary, uh, yes. you know, which uh, I think was on our top. Number uh, two last yeah. year, yeah. Was that last year? On yours, not ours. Uh, right. Well, I think uh, Sean <laughs> and I mine. That last one, right? year, yeah, it was number two because Mandy was our number one. Yeah, that's right. That okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, it uh, it. I don't think that Midsummer is as good. Uh, am I saying that right? It's Mid- Midsummer. Midsummer. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's as good as Hereditary was. Hereditary was a gutting yes experience, but that's kind of where Ari Aster uh, lives. I think, at least in these movies. Next, he's going to do a comedy or something, right? I mean, that's what's going to happen. He's not going to keep doing these horror movies. I don't know. He likes to show naked old ladies. So as he long as he can really show does. naked old ladies, I think that's all yeah, he cares about. I think. Well, he's working on like things that well, are well, taboo. Good. You know. Yeah. Uh, a lot of what he does is, I think, like crossing taboo lines, uh, but that's what kind of makes his movies feel dangerous in a way. Um, and I think maybe that's what I'm drawn to. And, you know, I mean, there's a formal stylism, style list to style, stylism. That's not right. A style. A style. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. To his movies where it's like uh, uh, I hadn't seen the compositions that he manages in this like done uh in a whole lot of things where you would basically like you know set up a fairly wide it's kind of like a old school old school like a, a classic painting or something where he would set up a frame and then have different focal points within yes. the frame is something like that's happening up in a corner in the mm-hmm. distance and something that's happening they do look like paintings the, yeah you yeah. are correct yeah um I mean, I think, you know, basically it feels like the conclusion of the movie is going to be, a, you know, is foregone. But the dynamic between uh, Florence, how do you put it? Yeah. Who I think is, a, a, to me, was a discovery in this movie. Like, she was a revelation. I'm like, she's great. And then she's going to be in the Black Widow movie. She's in Little Women. Uh, yep. She was in Fighting With My Family, the WWE movie that, that I too. wanted to see but never did. Oh, she's good. Yeah. It's a good movie. Yeah, it's a pretty good movie. Yeah, because, I mean, she was she's like good. extremely compelling in this. I don't know what the, the guy's name was who was the uh, the boyfriend, but, like, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like I shared both of their perspectives at some point in the movie. So, I mean, Astor does kind of play fair 
with because he is like trying to break up with her mm. and because of her loss you know he's like okay fine you can come with me and it's just like this is the breakup movie so i mean i think you're supposed to feel bad you know right, during yeah. uh, uh, this movie because but, you're just sitting there watching going like well nobody's winning in this yeah shit. yeah yeah and it's all Everyone's it just miserable. keeps getting worse but i mean as a horror movie i think you know when i look back on the year i was like there's nothing like in this kind of like serious uh, gut punch of a horror movie, uh, Midsummer was it for me. I think like I think it's the best horror movie of the year. Not saying the most fun, but I think it's the best. I think it's probably the one that will I think that I'll watch the most and that will stick around the longest. So there you go. That's number three. Sean, what was your number three? There we go. Um, number three. It's been mentioned here a couple times, and I'm I'm gonna put it out there as being on my list. Uh, Avengers Endgame. Uh, it is number three for me. Um, there is, <clears throat> there is. I think no other movie that I have gone back to and watched more than this movie this year. Um, this movie for me had. Uh, it, to me, it was the emotional payoff to 10 years of being invested in all the Marvel movies. And now say what you want about the Marvel movies. Some are way better than others. Some are really just setups like for the bigger team up movies that happens uh, a few times throughout their um, throughout this 10 year cycle. But Avengers Endgame paid off so much stuff for me. And had so many really great uh, emotional moments, moments where you're just sitting there uh, cheering, um, really like sad moments, you know, with characters you've been with for 10 years, um, you're losing them or having to say goodbye. Um, everything to me felt like really natural and it you can't say it enough. Look at every other franchise, every other huge franchise that has been going for some time you've got uh you got dc you got star wars you got a there's a bunch of them let's not forget the dark universe sean and the dark universe all oh, and the conjuring have majorly we'll say probably majorly fucked up somewhere or another which that and which means like marvel is like fucking doing something right like they figured something out or they can i mean some marvel movies are formula. not as what they know the formula. They got it. Well, like it's, they a, it's figured Kevin it out. Feige, right? Yeah, I mean, he, are we giving like credit to him? Thing, as he's like, his... he must be a fucking genius. Only he because, be. like, I didn't think so. Maybe at the beginning, because it's like, okay, yeah, anybody can do. I get what you're doing. Blah 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 blah. But because we've seen everybody else fail at yeah. it, yeah. Then it's like by just you know, I mean, it's like just by that process. Then this guy clearly has a handle on you know, because we were actually talking uh, off mic before uh, we started recording. The whole uh, like Kathleen Kennedy at the the helm of Star Wars. Right. It's like at some point, uh, Feige must be saying, "Okay, you uh, you know, it's like you can do whatever you want, but this point must be made." Yeah, you know, because this is where we're going with this right. series. It feels like in in <laughs> in this whole thing where everyone keeps saying like we have we have an idea of where we're going, we have a plan or everything. I don't think they do. Because I'm looking at Marvel doing it, and they must have, like like you said, you can do whatever you want, you gotta hit this point. They must have this shit locked down. But a lot of that's probably, it could be because, like, that it did exist in, like, the comics. So sure. they did have, like, you know, there was an outline of the story that was already there. Right, but to you know cohesively I mean? get there. Yeah, because yeah, they, they changed a shitload. Yeah, but, you oh, know, yeah. yeah, the broad strokes, they knew I Thanos. Like, and, I mean, DC's not doing it. You know that they were trying though with the whole Zack oh, yeah. Snyder thing I, and but all. I'm like, saying they're, they're not. Well, that's they're not no. successful. Like, everyone's trying. They're not, they're not, succe succe oh, they're not successful. That's what they're I'm just, saying. And they're failing yeah. at it. And these guys are like, as far as I'm concerned, like they're doing extremely well. And it's a movie that I, like I said, I was invested. I'm invested in these characters. We've been with them for forever. Um, uh, uh, I love the characters. I love the situations again. The history that is with these characters and with these actors. Mm -hmm. It like it shows up on screen, and so when you know, um, when characters are reunited after being apart forever, you feel like like you can feel what's happening between them, and it feels very real. Um, uh, say what you will about like certain plot elements of this movie, uh, time travel and whatnot, it gets a little sticky. That's fine, um, but when they had to like do it where it counts, fuck me, they pull it off in spades because. Um, 
Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I, I, I go back and rewatch. This movie did, in Marvel movies where they have the big battle scene, where there's just the unnamed armies fighting after each other, I find to be the most boring parts of any of these movies. I could care less about the big battles, because I know they don't matter, because I know that, you know, eventually we'll get to the point where the the story takes over and they have to go, they finally do the thing they're supposed to do. Um, the last hour of this movie, the giant battle, is my absolute favorite part of this movie. So much cool stuff happens in that battle. Um, so, many moments, so many moments we've been waiting for. Well, it's waiting for. <laughs> Char- but you're saying cool character moments. Well, there, it's, it's in, within it's, uh, embedded within action. Yes, because they uh, a lot of them. I mean, there's just well, so, that's really hard to do because I think a lot of times you get action movies where there's you know the the uh, outcome of the scene has like a, an out point, right? It's like, we have to get them to the, the, you know, the, whatever the drop off point. Yeah. So whatever happens between here and the drop off point is like, well, okay, there's action. But the only right. thing that's really important is they get to the drop off point. Right. So you can kind of check out of the movie right. and then come back in like, okay, here's when the movie picks right. back up. Not this one. Okay. Because it's all those little things that happen in there. These are deliveries on things that yes. set up like five, because, and you, 10 movies yes, ago. Yes, years ago. Because And then you look at that and you have to realize the restraint. Yeah, but Captain America picks up the fucking Thor's hammer and all that. No spoilers, no, sorry. Uh, everyone knows it, but that's in the fucking trailers <laughs> at this point. But, Everybody saw right, this movie. The restraint, <laughs> yes. The restraint they had to have to not do that earlier, to wait 10 years for that to happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I didn't know at the time when they were setting it up <laughs> that it was a setup. And that's where you kind of wonder, you go like, man, that's a fucking genius. Yeah. That, that you they, remembered yeah. that fan moment and paid it off. <laughs> in the climax and became like a plot point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, and they do that all over this movie. Um, I also think like, uh, I think Chris Hemsworth is doing some of the best work he's done in any of these movies. Like I like his arc cause he's pretty much been look at all the loss that his character has suffered throughout all those movies. He loses everybody. And so where he ends up, uh, it's finally at, caught up with him. It, it does. It finally yeah. catches up with him. Uh, but I also like that he like kind of, he claims some of that back in this final battle. Yeah, and can we talk about fucking Viking Thor? Viking Thor is pretty great. Beard, with the braided, uh, the braided beard. beard and everything. It's awesome. I, I love, they I love the, it. I love how they wanted to figure out a way to get him back in the long hair yeah. and, and everything, and they did it, and it's pretty great. I love, I love Viking Thor. I do too. Like, he's pretty great. I kind of hope he stays like that for a while. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, Captain America, obviously, you know, Tony Stark uh, doing what he does at the end of the movie, kind of making that, mm. that, that, oh, I forgot what he called it in the first Avengers movie, the, the, the final play or like the to lay down on the wire and let the other guy climb over you. I mean, like he does that his arc, the whole thing, everyone's arcs. Like I love the arcs. Everyone's doing good. Um, I, I love this movie. I will keep revisiting it. It never gets old to me. Um, there's just some great shit that gets paid off in this movie. Um, and, uh, I, yeah, I absolutely loved it. Um, well, probably top Marvel movie. Yeah, so yeah, you're saying so. uh, I was gonna, just going to ask if it's Infinity War Endgame. I mean, like we just discussed, like Infinity War is still like a great movie. Mm-hmm. Like that is that is more like oh, I don't know how to describe it. It is uh, I don't know. You you described it, but you put it on your list last year, and mm-hmm. you had a, you had a good description of it. Go back and listen to that. But that's that's still a very good. Very good movie. Uh, it is definitely different because I mean, Endgame is paying off. Uh, it's like Infinity War, like pays off nothing. It's they're still building, but yeah. uh, Endgame cannot exist without Infinity War. Like it's just it's two sides of the same coin. You can never do any of the stuff in Endgame if you don't have Infinity War uh, before that. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, yeah, yeah, Endgame. I think that's the, that might be my top Marvel movie. I think it's spectacular um and thoroughly entertaining mm-hmm. um so endgame is my number three michael my number three is a little movie called crawl oh, <laughs> uh, wow. yeah i agree with a, a lot of the sentiments you had colin i think it's i still think it's weird that it's 2019 i watched a movie that had barry pepper in it mm-hmm. well, that was I, that i think that's the weirdest on most most unrealistic thing about the movie is that barry pepper's the mm, leading barry man Pepper, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. a battle, i just think of battlefield earth whenever i see it oh yeah so, yeah oh, i always think saving private ryan oh yeah so no yeah. he's like 61. the lead in battlefield earth yeah. so we all have a barry pepper movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Holly, yeah. what's your barry pepper movie <laughs> Crawl. 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 <laughs> Crawl. 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 Um, Actually, it, no, it's probably Saving Private Ryan. But. 
Anyway, I had thought in the past that I was like pretty mixed on Alex Aja, and then like the more I look back at his stuff, I'm like, no, actually, pretty much all of it's pretty good. Like he's he's great, but yeah, like Colin was saying, he kind of like went away for a little bit, and it did, like, I mean, horns, like I know it wasn't good, but did anybody even really see it? Like yeah. it was like uh, it felt like it was supposed to be a theatrical movie because when you yeah. watch it, it's got a bunch of people in it. That you're right. like, this is a theatrical film right. that they scuttled at the last minute and said like we don't have faith. But in it's this. not like a career killer by any means. But no. it seems like it kind of put sidelined him for a bit. Like because it, it, it was his first direct to video, so like yeah. you can't get a theatrical release. But I mean, you well, know, he did something. In between Louis Drax and this, he did. He was like working on some kind of interactive stuff. Mm -hmm. He did something with Robert England for some virtual reality service that I don't even fucking know. And mm -hmm. I, it was like Campfire Stories or Campfire. Oh Time yeah, I think we something. watched a trailer for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, he has been working, but mm -hmm. like you know, to have him get a theatrical film again from a major studio, is yeah. Campfire yeah. Creepers, Campfire the Skull Creepers. of Sam. Yep. And and like this movie, the marketing was, uh, I don't know like what the marketing experience was for you guys in this movie, but I could not escape trailers and commercials for no, this movie. No, it was everywhere. Sorry, it was everywhere. That dripping, the, that... Yeah, the yeah, yeah. I, like they even had the countdown trailers in three days, mm -hmm. crawl, which like those are really expensive to do. So I was like, okay, they really put some money behind this. But yeah, with this movie, I think he really proves that he's still like a weight bearing pillar in the modern horror filmmaking which is weird because like i think fetty alvarez kind of stole his thunder for a little bit i think they have similar styles like they're kind of like mean-spirited gore like mm -hmm. you were saying colin yeah. you know when something happens like he's both gonna come into guys. it yeah yeah they're what both like that fetty alvarez up to, what's his next thing uh, he, i thought it was oh uh, i thought he just got announced for something and we were like oh yeah. like we were not impressed because yeah, it wasn't like a horror was, thing. Uh, girl with the in the spider's web yeah. which was like mm, yeah. Yeah. he's not he's not I david mean, I forgot fincher he did that yeah yeah Jesus. no yeah. he did something because don't breathe and evil dead were you know um, but, we're both great yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah i uh crawl is like i think my my state of the union for uh <laughs> movies of 2019 they're all too damn long I, I don't need every movie to be over two hours. Yeah, I really, really don't. Yeah, really long this year, weren't yeah. they? And this movie is like, I don't even think it hits 90 minutes. I think it's like 86 or 87. Love it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Give me. It is the most efficient, well-paced movie I've seen mm -hmm. this year. And that is not, those are not slights against it. Those are reasons to watch it and reasons what make it great is that he knows the time he needs. And he knows he doesn't need any more than that. Yep, and, get in, get out, get on with your life. And there yeah. were several times I thought this movie was over and then it kept going. And mm -hmm. I was kind of impressed by that because I thought for sure I knew exactly what was going to happen in this movie. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. Um, also, maybe cutest movie dog in a long time. <laughs> really cute movie dog that's a really good dog actor, too. Um, and... And a real dog. And a real dog. Fucking call yeah. of the wild fucking TV. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I finally saw the trailer for that shit. Yeah. Yeah, that looks oh, rough. Oh, boy. Yeah. It looks rough. Uh, a, real, a real cute dog. Mm. Um, but yeah, Crawl was great. I I wish I could talk more about it, but there would be spoilery stuff. Um, definitely go check it out. I have heard some criticism of the CG online and stuff, but I didn't yeah. think it was bad mm. when I watched yeah. it. I thought it was pretty solid. Like I, I said, I yeah. thought it was some of the best. I mean, it's better than the fucking alligator and eraser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, an eraser. Is that the back. last alligator wow. that we've seen? What's the last Lake alligator Placid? Movie? It's better than the alligator in Lake Placid. I like the eraser pole. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought that? Oh, that was horrible. Up. That's yes. why it was like, oh my rough. god, yeah. shoots an alligator. Yeah, so it's yeah. much yeah. better now. Yeah. My number three is Crawl. Holly. Uh, my number three is my second movie set in a cool old mansion. We're going with Ready or Not. Oh, that was oh. another one that I was jockeying yes. for. For oh, that one's <laughs> man. If we had a top ten. A lot of these would be getting in there. Yep. I loved Ready or Not. It was such a fun movie. It combines horror and comedy in just the best way. It it ticked, it ticked all the boxes for me. It's it, it's so great. Samara Weaving's character is so fantastic. She's tough as hell. She's she plays it with such tenacity. Like I love her character. It's it's so wonderful. Um, she's just fun to watch. Like she watch fun, act. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's fun to watch. A lot of people mistake her for Margot Robbie. Well, well I, my first thought was, why is she yeah. not playing Harley Quinn? Right. Yeah. yeah, I think she'd be better. She has naturally right. cartoonish features. She her really eyes does. are gigantic. Mm. She has. She looks like a cartoon character. She was in a movie yeah. called The Babysitter, which was on, a McGee uh, movie. Yeah, but it was on. Yeah. That was a pretty good movie. Yeah. Like you should go check that one out. It's a Netflix original. 
Uh, held hostage mm-hmm. by Netflix. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. She was also oh, are we in, starting uh, to beef with Netflix now? <laughs> Colin is. Colin has a, a. I don't have that many problems with Netflix. No, I know. I just. I Netflix. fucking. The fact that the the. I think it's just that movies like The Babysitter, which are good, nobody's fucking heard of it because yeah. they heard about. You either hear about it for a week, and then it disappears, and yeah. then you can't get it on any other platform. Yeah, yeah, that is holding it hostage. <laughs> I think. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have Netflix. I canceled it, so now I can't see half the shit. Did you? Well, there you go. Well, yeah, because like everything that they put on there now is like stuff that wouldn't get a, you know an actual theatrical release. You're not so watch, you watch the Irishman and then you said, "I'm done with you." Yeah, yeah is that what I'm happened? done with you. Yeah, I'd yeah. be done after the Irishman too. <laughs> the Irishman was what pushed Colin How to break up with Netflix. See it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So, uh, ready or not, about a uh, a young couple, newlywed couple, that they are at his his family's mansion for their wedding, and upon their wedding night, uh, family tradition, they have to play a game. They because uh, the the, yeah. the family is a, a mogul of board games. Mogul and, of board games, yes. yes. So games are part of their blood, and mm-hmm. they have to choose a game from a box. A very special box that, that we get into later, um, and depending on what game is pulled, um, well, the bride has to play. That's the role, and it's it's come to fruition that she picks the one game that she shouldn't have picked. Yes, hide and seek. Yes, um, because she's not only hiding and seeking, but she's actually like hiding for her life. Yes. because if she is found, they are going to murder her. Based on a family curse and tradition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, we we'll have to stay hidden till dawn. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. Fun stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it sounds, it, it's kind of a crazy idea, but it's, I think it's an original uh, story. I, I think it, the storyline totally works for me. It's, it's fun. It's, it's also it's, another movie that could give each member of the family their own little character. Yeah, this is true. It feels because I was true. I was seeing the trailers for this and Knives Out at about the same time, and I kept and on kind of yeah, similar. getting yeah. them. Yeah. You know, like which one's which? They're both in the you know which one's the mystery? And, Sourpuss mother, um, yes, the yeah. grandmother, and uh, uh, oh, the aunt, the crazy, oh yeah, the characters the are yeah, they're yeah. fantastic. Yeah, just the casting on some of those people. Andy Adrian McDowell. Brody's in that eight. Yeah, Andy they got McDowell, Andy McDowell yeah. back. The hell. Yeah. Adam, yeah. Bro- come from? Adam Brody is surprisingly fun in this movie. I don't always yes. like him. I think he's kind of a... Eh, I don't always like yeah, him. Yeah, because we did but... Jennifer's Body not too long ago on this show, yeah. and then it was like, whatever happened to him? I'm like, oh, yeah, ready or not. Yeah. <laughs> ready or he's not. very good and ready or not. Um, yeah, he's kind of like the anti-hero in this movie a little bit, and I don't know. He's. I think... I, I thought he was funny. I thought he was great. Um, but there's... There's a really... Like I said, there's a really great mix of comedy and horror... Um, there is wonderful gore in this movie. I was not expecting it mm-hmm. to be as bloody as it was, yeah, yeah. but it's so it it, it works because it's it's funny yeah. and it's it's actually like horrific. There's there are moments when I literally like audibly was like, oh god, mm-hmm. like, um, when she cuts herself on the fence. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, god, yeah, yeah. That was or even the nail scene. The nail, yeah. Well, this is by a, a collective, right? There are two guys who go by the moniker Radio Silence. Mm-hmm. They did an episode uh, of uh, VHS. You remember the uh, yeah. found footage movie VHS? Mm-hmm. Yes. They had, I think, the third, the UFO thing in that. So, oh, no, no, no. They did the Haunted House one, the one that like kind of stood out from that yeah. movie. Yeah. They do something between that and this i, feel I thought like they, did. they did it feels like they did something for hire where it was like wasn't really to their personality yeah. but this is like oh these guys should do more movies yes they should everything was so well done it looked very realistic it was very gory and it um it, it was it was really enjoyable um but funny but really funny that's i mean yeah. you know me i love horror comedy like that's my jam did you so know it was gonna was be great. a horror movie when you went into it i did I, I got I got that that vibe going into it because um, yeah, the trailer even, they shoot the maid yeah, yeah. I know but it like but Southbound. that's played for la oh uh, yeah yeah I didn't like that one but mm. the uh, but it's played for laughs in the trailer so my impression was kind of like I mean I, I was gonna see the movie anyway I was mm-hmm. intrigued it was like oh this is something that I you know it's not a sequel to something and I'm yeah. like what is this uh, I thought by the trailer that it was gonna be more tilting toward comedy when i got into the theater it was more thriller a uh, horror eventually yeah. that i was like oh this is my jam yeah you know but it has it walks this line of uh, comedy the, the, the trailer i was like okay i see that they're going horror with this but 
like most horror movies of this caliber, I thought. I was like, it's probably not going to deliver on the horror, but it did. Mm-hmm. It really did. That's what I was surprised on. I was like, I think they're marketing it to to attract people that like horror, but usually that just doesn't deliver. This delivered. Yeah, see, this is one of those sure. things where I thought maybe the marketing might have been off, you know, for, well, for it was, the movie. It was, it was marketed weird because the trailer was very... Uh, multi-tonal you couldn't really yeah. tell where they were going with it for sure did you think the movie was multi-tonal or you thought it was because i mean i've talked to people who are like that movie couldn't pick a lane but i'm like i you know i was fine with you know where it rested between yeah, the beats of a really horror and comedy i thought it found a great balance mm-hmm. and yeah i i thought i thought it was so much fun and they're i don't for me personally like there weren't a lot of twists like i don't know some people thought that there were there were twists um there weren't really for me until there was a very wonderfully grotesque crescendo at the end mm. that I did not well, see coming. There were some character in. twists that I guess I didn't yeah. see coming either. See not yeah. me. I, I oh, yeah? yeah, I was like, uh, okay, yeah, I saw that. Uh, okay. Do they but, ever establish does this take place present day? Yeah. Yes. But there's no cell phones yeah, at right. all yeah, they in never the movie. Really mention them, yeah. Oh, no, because Duder is on his... He's looking up how to use a crossbow. Yeah, oh, yeah that's yeah. right. And, uh, so yeah. she just didn't have the lead group. And they use a hers. cell phone, I think, in the car with the um, the butler. Yeah. Right. Okay. There is a that call there. And I think Adrian bit. Brody calls someone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Adam Brody. Yeah, not Adrian Brody. Not Adrian, Adrian Brody Adam is Brody. not in this had movie. Had to somehow surrender their cell phones when they started playing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the biggest surprise for me was the uh, supernatural crescendo at the end that was wonderfully disgusting. Um yeah, I had a lot of fun this movie. I thought it was great. I think everyone should check it out, ready or not. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. Number three. More fun or less fun than Knives Out? I, well, you said- I had more fun with it. So more fun with this. Three. All right. Yeah. Uh, my number two, I feel this is going to be divisive. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. My number two was uh, Ad Astra, the oh. uh, movie that it seemed like very few people saw or uh, on its original release- no, because again, this is one of those movies. Okay, so this is the way that I took this, right? I saw the the trailers, uh, and it kind of like it w- was non specific as to really what it was about. Mm-hmm. Uh, we knew it was a, one of the. It looked like what is going to be one of those ponderous space movies, patterned after maybe Interstellar. But the closest analog that I found it was um, uh, First Man, which I went and saw, and I fucking hated that movie. That was from Damien Chaz- Chazelle. Chazelle, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, that one was. <laughs> He's overrated. Was it bad? I'm gonna, uh, it was I'll give just, it a hot take. Jamie, Damon Chazelle's overrated. I liked, he doesn't make good movies. I liked Whiplash. All right. And I didn't no. see La La Land. No, no, no. You wouldn't like it. Okay. You would not like La La Land. <laughs> and I, I saw it like, and liked it at first and have really soured on it since then. Yeah, I did not like uh, First Man. No, I mean, it was it, because it was uh, it just, it was so heavy with, uh, with, I don't know, it was just kind of. It and wasn't heavy with importance. I really didn't like the right stuff either. So okay, okay, you know, it's the same there. story, yeah. But Ad Astra to me, uh, when I saw it, I guess that's why I was surprised by what I was seeing. Um, I don't know if I should say this or not. If it's spoilers, but I, based on the trailers, I didn't expect that there was going to be like a zero G knife fight in this movie, <laughs> right? I'm like, this is an adventure movie that or, you know or probably a, or a animal. Yeah, I didn't yeah. expect that at yeah. all. You I know, so that's that. why I was like constantly surprised. That is the thing I will never it. forget. Yeah. from this movie, <laughs> like the, it never forget. Into like a horror. Yeah, you know, if you want to know what we're talking about, go see it. Or extra. you know, um, there's like that heist pirate angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the first yeah. act. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ex- did, I've no. never seen that in a movie before. Yeah, like, when it. I when I mm-hmm. saw the trailer for this, I thought it was going to be this. Have you seen this movie? Nope. I thought it was going to be this like serious, uh, you know, like this is the serious thing about a, a space exploration. Of the void of space. Yeah, but it was less that than it was like a, an adventure film, which you know, like a science fiction adventure movie, which I kind of you know, as soon as I was like keying into this i'm like oh my god this is the kind of shit that i live for and i rarely get like the hard sci-fi it takes place in uh space shuttles and space stations that seem like you know something that we actually do build now right even though it's a little advanced into the future where um brad pitt is an astronaut who uh i think you know there's i guess two themes going on here there's the uh, you know there's the uh the 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 adventure film but then there's also like this kind of contemplative um like spiritual 
movie almost like it it kind of goes into like a psychedelic i think uh um you know mediation on um human loneliness he's trying yes, to make himself into like this perfect soldier and he you know his his uh, uh, uh blood or his heartbeat never goes above 80 you know beats per minute whenever he's faced with you know dire circumstances which makes makes him perfect for you know these uh, uh missions that he's sent on but he has to confront, I think, uh, you know, something very human uh, as he goes along. And uh, uh, um, see, I don't know how much I can say. Basically, I'm going to say Apocalypse Now is one of my favorite movies of all time. And this may be the Outer Space remake of this. Okay. And uh, where in Apocalypse Now you had uh, Willard and Kurtz. This one you have, uh, you know, Brad Pitt. And ultimately, uh, there's something that his father has done. Yeah. Uh, you know, that he has to, you know, go through on this kind of odyssey. You know, it's like it really Greek is an odyssey, odyssey That's movie. That's a good word for it. Yeah, because yeah, he has trials every fucking step of the yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, it remakes, I felt remakes a lot of the moments from Apocalypse Now, but it's Hearts of Darkness, I guess, or right. Hearts of Darkness, the Joseph Conrad uh, story. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I thought... Um, I thought Brad Pitt in this movie, I mean, again, like nobody saw it, I think, because it was marketed bad. I think in, in the 1970s, maybe, like it feels like this would have been the movie marketed alongside like Star Trek, the motion picture as like, you know, like here's the adventure to the end of the you know universe where you're going to discover like some kind of cosmic uh, significance. And now it's like, eh, you know, it's another one of these space movies that comes out. And I don't know, maybe audiences don't have the patience for this kind of um, um I keep saying, seeing the word meditative in my mind, but I don't know if that's entirely true. Because, like I said, it does get into what I consider psychedelic storytelling, where there's a lot of inner journey mm. going on there. But um, Brad Pitt's performance, I thought, was like one of the best of the year. I mean, if I could nominate him, you know, as like best actor for this, I think because he's playing a guy so reserved. Very. That it becomes a movie of close-ups and these facial tics and the stuff that he is saying versus the things that are roiling beneath the surface are, you know, like opposed. Yeah, hey, I don't know. I thought that this was a, I thought it was a great movie and I've seen it like, you know, it came out on video and I'm like, I got to watch this like two times in a row. So yeah, apparently uh, Ad Astra, I didn't, because originally I didn't think it was going to be second place, but uh, there it is. Ad Astra. Number two, Sean, number two. Uh, my number two for this year uh, was a little movie called The Art of Self-Defense. Uh, Holly has seen this movie. I don't yeah. even know what this is. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, this, yeah. is Where the, have I this is the Jesse Eisenberg uh, goes to, like, learn karate in a, in a small, like, dojo. No? No. Oh, shit. I'm going to show you the trailer. I, I, I told you, this is the year I am the most uninformed. Oh, that's right. <laughs> this, uh, this is, uh, yeah, I, this is a... Uh, one of the one of the gems of the year, I think. Um, it is. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, believe it or not, Jesse Eisenberg plays a very timid, uh, a milk toast um, human being. You don't say. I know, right? <laughs> really breaking new ground here. I know. Who he's the kind of guy you know. He goes to his job, and uh, there's you know people in the three guys stand in the break room, and he gets his coffee, and he goes over and walks up to them, and he kind of feels like he's gonna say something. They all look at him, and he just walks away, like he's playing that character. And so at a certain point, he gets mugged, um, and ends up in the hospital, and then from there, it's he goes on a journey of. Uh, uh, to discover his manhood, I guess it is. Or to, and you literally uh, see some manhood in this. I mean, you movie. see, yeah, there is, there is, <laughs> there's a, a, full front. Uh, yes, there is. Um, but he and he sees a, does he see a commercial? I, I think, yes, yeah, he sees yeah. a commercial on TV. Yeah. For um, uh, it's very Rex Quando. It is very Rex Quando. <laughs> this commercial. Um, it and it's it shows a uh, um a sensei on TV, um, trying to recruit people to come to his dojo and learn karate, and they do it in the most. They're trying to uh, go after the most hyper masculine like uh, version of these characters. Um, it's uh, I don't know. It's hard. It's 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 almost it's satirical on like they're going for the macho dude. It's like you will learn karate and then you will become the master of your life. 
and it it's it's um and it's very funny in the direction they choose to go with that. So he decides to take lessons, um, and he it's like he unlocks something in himself. He loves it so much that he wears his yellow belt uh, everywhere he goes, uh, even to work and everything. And um, it's the journey he goes on and his discovery of. Oh, it's hard to say. I don't want to give anything away with this because I, I want people to watch this movie. I think it's that good. Um, kind of like the – how do I explain this, Holly? Like the the, the rules, uh, it's hard to do. Um, there, There is an underground section of the dojo. Yes. That he, there's, there's the night class. There's the night class. Which you have to get okay. invited yes. to. And you some other get, weird yeah. – this is where the full frontal male nudity comes in. Yeah. And, there's, and it's, it gets a little more hardcore in the night class. Um, uh, there's also some extracurricular activities that the nice night class – partakes in um there may or may not be some underground um uh i mean there's murder involved other muggings oh so crime. This is, okay so you're i get what i was like he's not really selling me on it but it's because you're talking around the spoilers yeah okay. i don't because there's there's such a it's such a great discovery of such a simple thing as like uh <laughs> jesse eisberg and his timmy way going like i'd like to learn karate uh, so that you know i can defend myself and his journey from there to the person he ends up being at the end of this movie, it's extreme. Like he gets a little mm-hmm. taste of like finally taking charge of his life. And so he goes to work and he, he, he he's, um, he, um, manhandles like the guys in the break room who were just like, uh, who were making fun of him. Um, he punches his fucking boss in the throat in one very funny scene. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's a comedy. It's a very dark comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a thriller too. And some of the stuff they get into, um, Imogen Poots is in it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, she's very good. Um, her better the, role from this year. That's yes. Right. Her, <laughs> yeah, I, her, yes, definitely. Her best role from this year. Yeah. Um, the guy who played, uh, the guy who played Caster Troy in Face Off is the sensei. <laughs> I don't know if that does anything for you, but uh, the way he plays it is very, uh, is is very funny. Again, he's hyper masculine. You say who directed Wait. this or wrote it? Or Riley who? Riley Stearns. Um, I th- think this is like his. F- he may have done a smaller movie just before this, but this is his first like movie okay. movie. Um, uh, I don't know where I was going with that, but um, it's it's I mean it's a black comedy. Uh, it's extremely funny. It's it's Jesse Eisenberg used to his probably most perfect potential. Uh, I know, right? And it's I don't know. Take that for what you will, but it's it's amazing how he's used in this movie. It does a lot that I was not expecting. It does a lot that you're not expecting. What was it called again? The art of self. The art of self defense. Yeah. I'm going to show you the trailer when we're done okay. here, and it's All fucking right. great. It, um, it is one of the best endings I've ever seen in a movie. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's wonderful. It is unexpected. Uh, it's unexpected. Oh my god! And the dude who. Oh. I feel like you guys are setting the bar way too high right now. Uh. Well, here's the thing. You're, I, I think I'm you're gonna, overhyping it a bit. I'm here's, I'm it's not because I love this movie. Here's the thing. I don't actually really like that movie, but it does have a really great ending. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm only setting the bar high because I really enjoyed this film this year, and uh, it is my number two for the year, The Art of Self-Defense. Mm. Michaela. My number two is a movie that I'm sure most people haven't seen. Um, it's a Blumhouse movie called Sweetheart. Mm. This movie, uh, I don't know why... It didn't get any marketing and just got buried to Hulu, I guess. I never heard it's, of it until you're like, yeah, hey, have you no. seen this movie? Um, I had heard it mentioned in a podcast. And like, so basically the premise is um, this girl, Jen, washes up on the shore of this deserted island. She's all alone at night. Something comes out of the ocean to feed. And so she's got to not only just survive as it is, but also dodge this thing that's coming out of the ocean every night. And obviously there's going to be large chunks of the movie with no dialogue. Maybe that's why they thought it wasn't marketable but they they do creative solutions to get around that obviously um much like um like 127 hours is a good example right Mm -hmm. so you're like that's just a guy stuck in iraq but like they do all the flashbacks and like the memories he's having and like this movie employs things like that to you know make it not just a silent movie um and so that really does help but i was just really impressed by it it's a really cool creature movie that has a really cool creature and the way there's two shots they do to reveal it that are just like so creatively done especially like we know the blumhouse method is like cut corners everywhere you can it like 
like there's no plane crash scene in this movie right she just washes up like they cut out like you know Mm -hmm. they cut out things like that so like the first two times she interacts with this thing coming out of the ocean like you don't even see it but the way that they shoot how she interacts with it is awesome and it's the the lead i think her name is like kiersey clemens or something like that she's awesome and it's a lot to ask of someone to like basically be silent and have to like Mm -hmm. this movie really has to show and not tell you everything um so it's not something you can second screen for that reason you really need to be watching but it's it moves efficiently it takes turns i didn't expect they do use cgi but there is puppet work at points and the puppet work is fucking awesome there are some parts where like they would just use like uh, a part of the of the creature as a puppet coming through something and it Mm. looks so fucking cool when they did the puppet i was super into it and i mean it's you know we're kind of in that time of monster movies where they kind of the monsters and the like just appear and like we never really get a backstory of where they come from or why they exist and stuff so don't expect to like learn everything about this thing's backstory i i I know sometimes that's disappointing for people they're like well where did it come from and why you know why is it here and you it's, well, it's not important. It's not yeah, important. But even, yeah. you know, some movies just leave little, uh, you know, like breadcrumbs and you kind of build something. Right. You yeah. Know? yeah. But to, but that's not the point of this movie is the monster is not really the point of it. Um, but Didn't we have that same discussion about A Quiet Place? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I feel like we did. But yeah. Like, we're okay with not knowing yeah, the I don't even know yeah. it's not what this is about. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. For sure. For sure. It can only be disappointing if yeah. you tell me where this thing came from. And like, it just... <sighs> Like Black Christmas is getting so much marketing, and yet Blumhouse just like threw this in the garbage, and that's so disappointing. Where where, where can you see it? Oh uh, well, I streamed it on. Thank you for reminding me. I streamed it on Amazon. But listeners, you're listening to this. It just went up to Netflix, uh, so you can oh, stream it? it now on Christmas Day. It'll be on Netflix. So uh, as our people are listening to this, they can stream it. Oh, yeah. So please uh, go watch Merry it. Merry Christmas, by the way. Sorry yes. about that. Yeah, yeah. Merry Christmas. Happy so please holidays. go watch it. It is awesome. Oh, I forgot Wait to mention. For it was written and directed by J.D. Dillard, who's the guy that wrote and directed Slight, that other Blumhouse movie about the kid with oh, the like the card magic. superpowers. Oh, I yeah. Saw that. yeah, yeah, he used the magnets or what? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the guy that wrote and directed that also wrote and directed Sweetheart. Oh, really? So, uh huh. Interesting. So okay. yeah, I, think I know somebody who went to school with him. I need to pass That's a message cool. along. Then <laughs> yeah, nobody's watching it. This movie deserves it, and not no one's even talking about it either. No. I, I think you I, know? I never even I heard of it until you I may have just it. seen mm-hmm. uh, something on Bloody Disgusting, mm-hmm. yeah. but that's it. Yeah, it was it was probably them saying it's going to be on Netflix. Maybe. It was probably their article saying "Sweetheart's coming to Netflix." Yeah. And that was it. I'm saying this is like it. It it is like a two edged sword. It's both like the best time for movies and the worst. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. And I suppose it takes mm-hmm. podcasts like this so you can actually hear about these movies mm-hmm. that otherwise just kind of mm-hmm. float away. Yeah. Sweetheart number two, Holly. There you go. Uh, my number two. I have a feeling I'm about to open a door. To- a can of worms. Uh, well, not a, a door to a can of worms. Uh, I'm gonna open a door to uh, some number one picks possibly coming up. My number two is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And oh, I saw that movie. Yeah, yeah did, you? did you? Did you? <laughs> do you like it? Um, this is by far my favorite Tarantino movie. By far, I'm I'm not like an avid Tarantino fan that like thinks he can do no wrong. Uh, no, I think he needs to learn how to edit. I'm not like a massive fan. I like his stuff all right, but I've never been like a super fan or anything. But I loved this movie so much. I had so much fun watching this movie. Um, I I had a really great experience watching it the first time around um, because I was at a private showing with Mike Moe, the guy who plays Bruce Lee in the movie, mm-hmm. and yeah, it was a really fun. Ex- yeah, I saw it with Bruce Lee. It was a really fun experience. Um, and then I, I saw it again in the theater, and I actually r- enjoyed it even more the second time. It's just that kind of movie. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's because you don't know what you're getting the first time around, and the second time you know what you're getting, so you can take it in more. Yeah, um, it goes quicker the second. It does time, go I'll quicker the second. It was time. much it quicker does. the second time. I very much agree with you. Um, I I think that there's still a case that Tarantino could have edited a lot of it, but. The pace for me was fine. Like I, it's, it's a hangout a, it's, movie. It's a long mm-hmm. movie, but it works. It's gonna get high and float around LA. Yeah, <laughs> basically. As long as you like the people enough, you can hang out with them all yeah. day. You do, and that's the thing. Yeah, about I'll, this. I'll hang out on a yeah. roof with with Cliff Booth. That's the thing about this movie. These characters are so much fun, 
Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt are spectacular in this movie. I, I think it's my favorite thing I've seen, like, of either of them. Yeah, I could watch them watch a yes. TV show for right. a couple was hours. fucking right. hilarious. It's like yes. the commentary. It was like you yeah. hanging out and watching. Yeah. I couldn't believe they put that in a movie. I know. That's what I want Because they're coming out of the surround <laughs> channels, like, them watching themselves yeah. in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> that well, was Yeah, great. that guy there, he was a real Yeah, real yeah, guy. that guy's That's asshole. a good leap right there. Yeah, going, that's yeah, good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, it <laughs> it's like this really meta experience. It was. It really was, um, and I was I was surprised at how um, how heartfelt it was for a Tarantino movie. Mm-hmm. There was some really like genuine moments. I think that was the biggest surprise that I. Had. Yes, it mm-hmm. was very surprising. I was like, "This is this is like a legitimately feel good movie." However, there is still a classic, you know, Tarantino extremely right. violent right. scene. There's in this still movie. some goddamn fucking hippies in this movie. <laughs> 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 There's some really great lines. My in this favorite movie. line. Uh, <laughs> Goddamn fucking hippies! I'm as real as a donut, motherfucker. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I I love the I love the fairy tale angle of this. I I think it's an incredible love letter to '60s movies or '60s Hollywood. Um, and I'm a huge true crime fan, so I was waiting for the you know the ultimate. You were waiting for the Manson murders. We're waiting for all that. And this had the most satisfying ending I think I've ever seen in a movie, ever. It was so incredibly satisfying. Even the title placement. Yes! Like that. Yes! <laughs> you know, just so, yeah, it was nice. It was wonderful. Mm-hmm. It was absolutely wonderful. I, I had so much fun with it. I laughed so hard during this movie, and I don't typically laugh very hard at Tarantino movies, but I laughed my ass off. I, I loved it so much. Definitely... Easily in my top, and I it it battled for my number one or number two, mm. but it is it is my number two. And I want to watch it again. I know. I just bought it. I love it. So excited. I oh, know. I've seen it like four times now. Yeah. I think because it's my number one movie I of knew the year. It! I know. It's like by process of elimination. <laughs> you're gonna. I probably know it. I don't know what your number one is. Then. You're making me. Yeah. Uh, no, I was actually thinking of like just because I knew we were doing five movies. Uh, the one that was in strongest contention, I think, for number five was a movie called uh, One Cut of the Dead, uh. this Japanese zombie movie, because it also is a love letter to filmmaking, right? And then you'd cap it off with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's, I think, for people who are movie fans and, and uh, you know, because I wasn't alive in 1969, sure. and I am kind of passingly familiar with a lot of the movie stars and very specific minutia of this, but this is Quentin Tarantino, like, trying to, and I guess this is something uh, that only uh, um, filmmakers of his caliber have access to. He is recreating his childhood. Mm-hmm. You know, and building the thing and getting to live in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's got to be a dream for like any filmmaker. He is my favorite filmmaker. I said last mm-hmm. week, John Carpenter, number two, Quentin Tarantino, I think is number one. Um, when I first saw this movie, yeah, it was kind of like it wasn't um, it wasn't the, the, the Quentin Tarantino movie that I was expecting. Uh, I have since gone back to it multiple times and yeah, I mean, I don't know if I think it's the best movie, but it's on its way, you know, <laughs> to, to that uh, of his career, mm. like the capper, because it is so much different than, uh, his other films mm-hmm. where it does have this like gigantic beating heart in the film, uh, both with the Margot Robbie and you know, just seeing her go to the movies and watching herself. I mean, like, I you know, that. we've all kind of been there, but you know, the, uh, the seeing a movie, but to see yourself in the movie and just like her experience of of loving the way that people react mm-hmm. to you know this is yeah, what when movies people laugh are. and she turns and looks around yeah yeah, yeah because it's so it's, sweet. this is like the American popular entertainment art form you know yeah um the the two characters I think this is the you know we we made a big deal out of Matthew McConaughey and the McConaughey mm. when he had but I'm like Ed Astra and and uh, once upon a time in Hollywood this is the Patanasans. Nobody's going to go with me on that nope. one. No, okay, not fine. at all. Uh, Does he need an assance? Like, no. he's one of the greatest actors we've got. Okay, but that's that's exactly my point. It's like, uh, uh, you know, we forget, I think, because I he's think a so. movie star. Like, I keep remembering, like, the Thelma and Louise Brad Pitt or the California Brad Pitt or the 12 Monkeys Brad Pitt or the Interview with the Vampire, you know, Brad Pitt. We're like, this guy does have, like, 
the serious or even the Jesse James, you know, these are the ones that are coming immediately to mind. Yeah. Like this guy's got some serious fucking acting goods, you know? And uh, I think both Cliff and the Ad Astra guy, it's like he's really good at like underplaying. But Cliff Booth is like one of the greatest written characters, I think, uh, mm-hmm. you know, of this year. Mm-hmm. You know, if he doesn't get nominated for a best supporting actor for this one, I'm going to be like, you know, fuck the Oscars. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think in some ways that overshadows uh, the Leonardo DiCaprio, the yeah. Rick Dalton part. But Leonardo DiCaprio may be doing the best fucking work I have ever seen him do in a movie. I don't, I don't think it overshadows. I think they complement each other. I think. Yeah, but you know what I mean? It's like Brad Pitt's you know a character or just because you know it's like i think that one will get more attention come oscar time Maybe. i think in the movie you're absolutely right they complement each other but both guys are bringing a game and doing very good work in both of these parts yeah um i mean as a love letter to film you know this is you know and the idea that like you know it's a it's a it's a buddy story between uh, an actor and his stunt man, mm-hmm. you know, and it's basically you, you hang out with them over the course of uh, what, like two days, I think, like total that you spend, you know, in the in the movie. Um, I think uh, I think there's a month. Well, there's a well, gap because yeah. they, they go to Italy. Italy yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you see like a day from Italian. you know we wake up till right, you know, yeah. and then yeah, then they go to Italy. All this stuff is and he's name dropping like you know it's like yeah he's the second best Sergio Carbucci is the second best you know Italian filmmaker. I'm like yeah because Sergio Leone is you know he's like layering all that stuff in there. That I was sitting there like oh you're you're speaking my language here. I kind of know I'm catching all these references, um, but yeah, even on repeat viewings it gets faster. Um, yeah, I thought that this was the best thing that I saw this year and will continue to keep watching uh, this. I mean, like, even right now, if you said, like, you know, you want to watch it, I'd be like, yeah, I mean, no problem. Like, you know, uh, at three hours long, I'm like, yeah. yeah, I'm ready to commit right now to watching this thing again. Um, yeah. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, number one movie, best movie of 2019. Sean, what's yours? By process of elimination. Well, shit. Now I want to. I want to. It's not. It's not number one. Although I want to kick Jojo Rabbit off and put that in my number five now. Fuck. <laughs> what? Right. Again, this is changing. Oh no. <clears throat> All right. Uh, but no, my number one uh, for the year um, is a movie called Marriage Story. Okay. Uh, now I'm maybe. Uh, uh, I think I'm the uh, the uh, um, the audience I, they I were going seen it, for. So, yeah, I know it's a Netflix. Uh, I mean, it was released theatrically, but it is a Netflix okay. movie. Yes, they produced it and everything. Uh, Marriage Story stars Scarlett Johansson and uh, Adam Driver, um, who are doing some of their very best work. Um, I haven't seen Adam Driver in a lot, but I've seen a lot of him lately, um, and he's fucking killing it. Like, I want to see this guy in more. He's also in, there's another movie out called The Report um, with him and uh, Annette Benning, which is another one I have to get to because it looks fascinating as well. But he's, like, really doing great work this year. Um, and uh, never more so than in this movie. Um, it's about a couple who has come to the end of their marriage. And so it is the, uh, it's the process of them getting separated, getting divorced. Uh, she moves across country to LA. They were a New York family. He's a playwright. She's a actress who's getting back into the game. They have an eight year old son. And so it's kind of, it's the disintegration of their family unit, and uh, kind of what they thought they were and what they're going to be from uh, here on out. And it's it's pretty it's like it's pretty devastating. The story um, to me, it felt like a really good James L. Brooks movie. Mm. That's the vibe I got from it. And I was just like, I got the shit. vibe. No, is this Noah Baumbach? Yes. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yes. You've seen one. You've seen them all. OK. Well, he was he used to be Mumblecore guy. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. still is. OK. <laughs> Um, but like, yeah, it felt like a really good James L. Brooks movie. Um, I love James L. Brooks old the shit. progenitor of Mumblecore. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. He only um, knows how to write about relationships in peril. That's fine. That's every movie he's ever written. Mm-hmm. That's fine. The Squid and the Whale was another divorce story. He did I don't know years if I've prior. seen any Some people other have Noah a lock on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's their theme. It's just every time he makes something, though, it's like this is the most. Re- it's like guys, he repackages this shit every couple years, and we're always like, I've never seen it before. I, I think this is. The I one love that's John be the most Carpenter, attention. and all of his movies are basically like about a guy who doesn't want to become one of them. You know, it's like that's as long way as more basic it. than like the pre- like that's that's a very broad premise. You could apply that to a lot of things, but 
Noah Baumbach is obsessed with yep. divorce and marriage is falling apart. Uh, this is, I think, my first Noah Baumbach movie. So uh, it's all new to me. Um, but <laughs> I you think. Did you see the squid in the whale? No. He's done a lot of movies. I didn't know what the yeah. fuck it was when I'm just like, oh, that doesn't sound like something I want to watch. Nah. But, I, like, I like Marriage Story better than Squid in the Wind. Uh, but I did like this one. And again, I'm I'm like the audience they're going through for this because I identified uh, with these characters on both sides throughout this movie. Um, I could very easily put myself in these situations. I've seen situations I've gone through on screen before. Um, this makes me probably a little biased towards this movie, but I think they pulled it off in such a... Uh, it felt very realistic. It felt very natural. I've had these conversations with my kid that they've had in these movies, uh, in this movie before. Um, I th- thought that everyone was like just fucking crushing it. Um, there's some really like really good like breakdown scenes where people are just yelling at each other um, and crying. And there's just I mean, Adam Driver sings in this movie, but it's such like there's so much behind the song he's singing in it. Like it's um, it's. I think fantastic. Gut wrenching. It's. I mean, it is. It, it really is. is a gut wrenching movie. Um, it's got a score by Randy Newman. Mm. Like, which I'm like, you you listen to it throughout the movie, and you're just like, this sounds like something I've kind of heard like before. Toy Story. Yeah, I, well, it kind of does. Twisted yeah. Toy Story. It does, and then you get to the end, it's like, oh, it's a Randy Newman. Did he do oh, Princess Bride too? Is that Randy Newman? I think I it was. Think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, but like all these elements come together, um, and I think that they really, really pulled off a great movie here. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Not that this is any indicator of how good a movie is, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's, you know, um, it gets a lot of awards this season. Um, but, uh, yeah, marriage story. I really thought everyone was doing fantastic work on this movie. I think it's, uh, very well written. Uh, I, again, I'm not familiar really with his other previous work, whether he repackages it or not. He's married to Greta Gerwig. Can you tell? Oh yes. I, I just saw that recently. Yeah. Well, hell what household that must be like. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I feel like they both kind of have like their writing styles are so intertwined with each other that they can't really ever split up as like a probably, couple. Yeah, you know what I'm not. saying? Like <laughs> they'll be together forever or they'll, or they'll go through this shit when they get divorced. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I felt it was a really powerful movie to me. It was also like there's some really. Um, it's not just a downer, but there is some. There's fun moments, like even like their supporting actors. I can't not mention them. Laura Dern uh, as um, Scarlett Johansson's like lawyer in this is she's fantastic. I think she's knocking it out of the park. Uh, Ray Liotta has a comes in and out a couple times in this. He's also a good cutthroat lawyer. There's a great scene in the courtroom uh, where Laura Dern and Ray Liotta are going back and forth. Uh, at each other with like the information that's been brought up um, by each spouse throughout the movie. Um, it kind of, it gets regurgitated through the lawyers back to the yeah. other partner. And it's kind of, it's a very cutting scene um, because it's just showing like, this is a, like a really low point for the couple. Um, and so they're kind of, they're really breaking down at that point, going at each other's throats when, um, you know, getting into the divorce, they always thought it was going to be something else, that it would be easy. But or... it makes it even more hurtful because their lawyers are doing it for them. Yeah. And they're just like sitting there with their heads down like they're ashamed of what's happening. Yeah. It's just sad. And because nobody like I mean, they feel at that point, they both feel like they have to do this. Yeah. Because they're being forced to do this at this point. Um, and, you know, I mean, they get to that point. They 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 rise. They fall. Um, and, you know, where they end up at the end, I like I mean, it got me. Um, so, I mean, this movie did a lot to me, um, and that is why it is my number one for the year, Marriage Story. Michaela. My number one is Dr. Sleep. Ah. Uh, I really did not expect to like this movie. I thought the trailer was No, you were all over this bad. movie before you went <laughs> The trailer it. was You're like, get wretched. your glowing eyes, hat lady <laughs> yeah, out of my like, movie. And I actually really liked that character. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. I, oh, my God. I like went and being like, this is going to be some cheesy-ass shit, and it's going to... It's going to ruin like this good sequel to The Shining. I actually really like Rose the Hat. was really into it. Rebecca Ferguson was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, it. Where do you start? I mean, it's the sequel to The Shining. We're on this kick lately of like picking up with movies 40 years later. We had Halloween 2018 last year. Now we have the sequel to The Shining for almost 40 years after The Shining. And Bill and Ted's just around the corner. Uh, yeah. Yay. <laughs> Where's Austin Powers? He's sitting this one out. You oh, just wait. I have, feeling, I have a feeling it's coming back. I mean, the love guru really 
That that's what buried <laughs> him, right? Guru too. Like that that's what did him in. He hasn't done like shit since I know, then, he right? He needs an Austin Powers yeah. force. He's he's living cameos off that, in Bohemian he's Rhapsody. Off that sweet Shrek money. He's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. fine. That's true. There probably is a lot of Shrek yes. money. That's a sad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Doctor Sleep. Um it so I know my state of the union was movies are too long. Like this movie, I'll watch the three it's hour cut three because hour there's direction. so much content in this movie. There's so much happening that like I don't know how you make it less than two and a half as it is. Like it's I, I didn't feel the length when I was watching it. It That's what she said. Um <laughs> I hope Sorry. not. Um but so you know, it picks up forty years after the shining. Um the storyline the, the timeline in the movie is a little rough on exactly when, but um Danny is an adult now. Uh, I don't think it's a spoiler to say he's like an alcoholic. And obviously after Just living like through some childhood dad. trauma, yeah, uh, you, you become your parents, whether you want to or not. Um, and he's just, his life's kind of falling apart and he's trying to put it back together. Um, he drinks to suppress the shining. Um, I don't know. There's so many things I want to talk about, but they're like spoilery content. Don't spoil it too much. Um, now I feel like since it's got such glowing reviews from people, that yeah. I have to go see this or I have to get it when it or watch it when it comes out. So while while Danny's dealing with trying to be a functioning adult that's not an alcoholic, um, of course in a small New England town, he's doing that too. He's he goes to a like town in the middle of nowhere to recover. It's it's that I was like that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I can tell Creepy we're in Stephen King land. <laughs> um. And then, meanwhile, there's this girl, Abra. She has The Shining, but she's but it's like way stronger than anyone. I'm sorry, her name's Abra? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes they call her Abby. Sometimes it's shortened other things. Yes, Abra. Abra. Um, Stephen King. Sean, I, I, yeah, are yeah. you surprised? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there is also this like group of um, like roaming uh, spiritual vampires called the true knot and they're led by rose the hat rebecca ferguson and they can't live forever they just kind of extend their life by sucking like your like life force out of you they call it steam because that's what it looks like it looks like steam is it um, anybody or just shining people? just the shining people uh yeah but like the thing is they kind of talk about how everyone has varying degrees of the shining because they, they even say in this movie like have you ever just like had a gut feeling and it came true they're like that's the shining so technically like all people have it the way they talk about it it's just like all people have the, the de- force it's like the midichlorians yeah it's yeah. like what level <laughs> yeah. of midichlorians yeah. you have so it's like who's worth killing over it that's yeah. the thing so that's why the like the girl that has the most power like she could sustain them for a long time because they kind of like trap it in these little bottles I feel like I'm getting too deep in the weeds here in this movie but um <laughs> She, uh, Rebecca Ferguson is awesome. Uh, they kind of rove around, and so they kind of go around like um, near dark style, kind of like picking up people that have the shining and sucking the steam out of them. And all these stories converge in the third act, and we we the the sets that they must have they had to have completely rebuilt sets for this. I, I, I think so. It, they look amazing cannot believe how good it looks the overlook looks just like you remember it and there are the things they do once they get to the overlook are just like gave me chills and i just couldn't believe some of the stuff i was seeing like i haven't really seen a sequel function this way and it still be successful it's really hard to talk about without getting into spoils (laughs) because it's a very complicated movie but it is a very Stephen King movie. It's like every idea he's ever had just like shoved into one story. There's even a part where I was like, really? I was like, dude, you're you're becoming that family guy bit. You guys ever seen that family guy clip? <laughs> the where they're like, Stephen, what, what do you have? A, he said his like agent's <laughs> office. And they're like, Stephen, so what idea do you have for a story? And he's looking around the office. He's like, what about a haunted? And he grabs lamp, lamp. And like he sold there. There was a part in this movie where one of the characters says that like pain makes the steam like more purified and i was like oh so like scaring kids makes them taste better yeah i was like we're come on you're recycling your ideas here man <laughs> but um i mean if you love the shining like this gives you like bonus scenes to the shining because there are flashbacks that are incredible and the cast of people they cast for the flashbacks for like wendy and jack and like some of the ghosts in the in the overlook are incredible like the um do you remember what her name was colin the girl from starry eyes that was wendy um, we were talking about her off oh, mic, but oh, Alexis Esso, I think. I think or, so. Yeah. yeah, she was phenomenal. She mm-hmm. had her, her had all of Shelley Duvall's awkward mannerisms down. Mm-hmm. She got the run and like everything. I like some of the, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She yeah. does. She does yeah. that. She goes, Danny, and does yeah. that. Yeah, it's spot on. And it's it and. He, 
Mike Flanagan is so talented because he knows right when to cut away on those things to let it go too long to where it starts to look fake. You know, he knows right when to leave them. And I honestly think you put this movie in any other less capable director's hands and it's a complete shit show that doesn't make any sense and doesn't work at all. I don't like envy the job of someone that had to merge Stephen King material with Stanley Kubrick material and like live to tell the tale. And like, I know this didn't do financially well, which is a shame. I think they, this would have killed as like a January movie. Mm. I think that early November is yeah, not a good time out, for this. What, like the week after Halloween. Yeah, and that's like that. we're in we're in the midst of award season at that point, mm-hmm. and people are or and it's holiday movie season too. It's just not a great time for a movie like this. Well, I was shocked to find out that like there's a bunch of people who didn't go see it because they're not familiar with The Shining. <laughs> You're that's like, crazy. Isn't yeah, The Shining like a thing that we all <laughs> you know somehow. But yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I, mean, I would it is almost watch yeah. the show forty years again old again. I go yeah. see that movie. Right. Yeah. So number one, Doctor Sleep. You gotta check it out. I, I like I said, I went in being like, "This is gonna suck," and I loved it. So and Mike oh, Flanagan's yeah, like, mm-hmm. by it. he's another one of those guys where I, I mean, the trajectory of his career. You know, it's like he started off with uh, oh god, I can't even remember the movie Absentia. I think mm-hmm. uh, a short film called Oculus that he eventually made into uh, the movie Oculus. Mm-hmm. That was a theatrical release. And then he spent some time in uh, Netflix Purgatory. Okay. He made some good. You said great. Purgatory. Well, yeah. I mean, he made Hush, which Hush was, amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, but you can only see it on Netflix. And then uh, Gerald's Game, which, Gerald's which I think I had on, uh, on one of I did. It. You didn't. Okay, because, I didn't. You no, know, no, and you said I couldn't because it was a only a Netflix, Netflix thing. movie, yeah. right? You're okay. Just like, no. You just this year we got the, the you just gotta break the rules sometime, Sean. So. And uh, then we got uh, uh, the Haunting of Hill House. Yeah. So you know, well, and before I wake, which yeah. you know, this is not a bad oh, right, movie, yeah. but yeah. Uh, but I like the 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 fact that like this is a guy who pretty much, you know. In the horror genre, it's still fine. It's still hard to find people. I think that uh, directors, filmmakers who work specifically in that genre, it's like it. You know, they want to cross over and do different things. Fede Alvarez is like, man, this guy is going to be a voice. And then it's like he goes and does the girl with the dragon tattoo. I mean, good for him. He graduated. To, you know, this is the way you got to do for the career. Yeah. But Flanagan is pretty much stuck strictly with doing uh, horror stuff, and now he gets you know a major. Hollywood uh, Warner Brothers motion picture, you know, big screen platform release. Mm-hmm. You I've know. seen like a minor groundswell of people wanting him to do a Dreamcatcher remake now because they're they're like he can do the Stephen King. Uh, like mm-hmm. this is the best Stephen King adaptation of the year, I think. I mean, I don't think it has a lot of steep competition. Yeah, no, though, so, like, I didn't know? like it as much as you did, but I think that is still uh, that I would still agree with that yeah. statement. Yeah. 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 Sorry, <laughs> Holly. Pet no, Cemetery yeah. was bad, and uh, so it, and it was, it sucked it was, as well. It was disappointing. It did. Mm-hmm. And some good scenes. Yeah. <laughs> but we haven't gotten to our worst movies of the year oh, yet. Yeah, so I forgot about who that. knows if it's going to be there? <laughs> Holly, what's your favorite movie of the year? My favorite movie of the year is Jojo Rabbit. Uh, oh, wow. Yes. Jojo Rabbit comes back. Which should not be a surprise. Because she loves Nazis. I don't know if you guys know I, this about Holly. She I, loves Nazis. I am just mad about Nazis. Nazis. Someone oh. clip that out and use that for <laughs> nefarious know, yeah, reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Nazis. is the kind of shit that comes back on you later. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. there is a podcast where she said, yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah. don't ever run for public office now, uh-huh. guys. Well, no plans of that. <laughs> um, but I do love Taika as you all know. <laughs> as you all know. Um, so this movie I knew was going to be right up my alley, and I was not even remotely disappointed. It was spectacular. It hit all of the beats for me. Um, I won't talk a lot about it because Sean already talked about it and he hit a lot of what I wanted to say. But um, there's such a heartfelt sweetness to this movie, which is just remarkable to me because obviously it is about Nazis and it's about a little boy who dreams of being a Nazi. And <laughs> Two his, extreme measures. His imaginary friend is Hitler. And it is unbelievably heartfelt and sweet, and there's just this innocence about it. it it's very reminiscent of, um, it's very reminiscent of like um, uh, Wes Anderson. It's got a Wes Anderson feel to us. It's very, it it's very Moonrise Kingdom, yes, Grand yeah, Budapest yeah, Hotel, very yeah. much so. Um, the style of it is is very Wes Anderson, yes. um, but it's got Taika Waititi's signature humor. It's there's a silliness about it, um, but and. Obviously, he's got a very dark sense of humor. You know, we, he made he made vampires funny, and he does that with this. He makes Nazis 
fucking hilarious. And it's done in a way. But in a takedown kind of way. Sat- it's, sat- yeah, it's satiric. Done, yeah, yeah, he's satirizing it. Yeah. Yeah. It is done in a way that like they are absolute fools. They're yeah, idiots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, I, well, that's what I thought Tarantino like, did with the like, Manson Rebo. family. You know, it's like, yes. you, you know, when you yes. do these characters, it's like you can't. You have to deflate You're taking them. your power away from them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or how he did the clan in uh, Django Unchained. Exactly. You know, kind of, yeah. It's it's exactly like that. Like uh, Rebel <laughs> Wilson is one of the the um, her like, best role. Like the headmistresses at like yeah. Nazi camp or whatever, and she's yeah. just ridiculous. And Sam Rockwell. Oh, and, and oh, what's the guy from Game of Thrones? What's his name? Um, he um, what the hell's his name? Oh, uh, Alfie. Yes, Alfie. Oh, Alfie yes. Allen. Alfie yes. yeah, from yeah, yeah. John Wick. He's, sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, He's like Sam Rockwell's like right hand man, and those two together are so fucking funny. Yeah. It's, I, it's, it's I like when ridiculous. the kids are in the pool. It's like, oh fuck, so drowning. We have to go. <laughs> it's Every so, line he says is it's fucking so perfect. Funny, and, but it and it like the whole movie's hilarious. But then all of a sudden, it gets to a point where it's just like serious. Yeah, and there's like it's kind of scary when it gets to that. Point. Yes, there are like these intense moments happening. All of a sudden, you're like, oh my god, like I'm like. I'm really feeling something right, right. now. This All of is- a sudden, like Taika Waititi is like, he's reciting Hitler. Yes. And he, because, and I thought about that when I heard him like, this is something Hitler actually said. Yes. Has to be because he gets serious and scary about it when he's yes. trying to scare the, the kid. Because, yes. The, the more, the, the more the kid is conflicted about his thoughts and his feelings, yes. the scarier and more real Hitler becomes. Yes. Mm. He's at first he's like this lovable, you know, like imaginary right, friend. You love me, so we're cool. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. He's like this lovable imaginary friend. And then the more real it gets, the more scary he gets. And it takes this turn. And, and you realize that the movie is not like glorifying something. It's like it's it's recognizing that there was this horrific thing that happened, mm. but it's making it satirical because it's it, it's just it's just a brilliant way to display this movie it, it's it's really fantastic it's um you were saying earlier sam rockwell and scarlett johansson are phenomenal in this yeah. they 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 hit the the comedy bit bits but then they also just bring like dread and sadness and love and empathy and it's just remarkable there's incredible depth to these characters mm. every every character i love every character in this movie they're all fantastic um, yeah, I felt every emotion watching this. It it really, I, I laughed, I cried. <laughs> that fucking kid with the glasses. The little roly poly kid. It's just not a good day to be a Nazi. He's amazing. Like I, I loved everything about this movie. It was absolutely my most enjoyable movie experience of the year. Easily, like I, I, I walked out of the theater saying this is my number one. <laughs> like no, no doubt about it. And I had done that with Once Upon a Time, but yeah. Then I saw Jojo. I fell in love. Uh, Jojo. Jojo Rabbit, number one. There it is. There it is. All right. Well, that's uh, the list. All right. That's, yeah, that's the top, top five. Top. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. I got to say, I'm kind of Pretty surprised. mixed bag. Did yeah. you check to see how your uh, Michaela oh, been yeah. trying to figure out like if she could guess? <laughs> I tried to guess all of your guys' top fives to see if I could. Uh, how oh, well did you? I, yeah. I, I, oh, I did insane. pretty good. Okay, I did pretty good. So, Colin, uh, I had your number five as Midsummer. I had four as Ad Astra. Three as Knives Out. Two at Ready or Not. And one is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, I thought okay. Knives Out would have made your top five. Yeah, that's I what I thought it too. It was all day long. But then, kept it, but that's the list. Right I then there. I had a, I had like a and then I started really second guessing myself. So I have like an I had like a maybe section and mm. my maybe section for you. I had one cut of the dead. Mm. All right, I put that at ten. Oh, it was at <laughs> yeah. five. I kept on moving it around. Yeah, because yeah. that movie. Yeah is like you know this it's a celebration of film it's a zombie movie like a uh, first right. person uh, you know uh, uh, found footage zombie mm-hmm. movie but yeah. yeah you have to see it because that description does not do it justice i was gonna say i hope is it okay sean yeah. you were by far the biggest wild card and i like i i was like i could be 100 percent right with yours i could be 100 percent wrong what'd you get so uh, for yours i had number five i had hustlers I thought for sure you were gonna pull us because you did come back and say like, you were like really it's amazing movie. guys yeah, yeah, you yeah. were really sound I it. liked it yeah I know but like you're the only person I know that's even seen it I would agree with that <laughs> you know? I'm a, again that and Charlie's Angels I might be the only person who went to all those movies <laughs> and then uh, your number four I had Parasite 
I was really surprised that didn't make your top five, honestly. There's a lot that, like, top ten would have been, mm-hmm. like, there's a lot of these that would have made it in there, but... And then your number three, I had The Art of Self-Defense. Okay. And then... Oh, shit. Well, bam. Two, well, minus two. Bam. Yeah, two, I had Marriage Story. Okay. And then number one, I had Jojo Rabbit. Oh, see. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So. It's close. And for Holly? <laughs> it's close. For Holly, I had a really hard time, because I remembered, like, three things you said you liked, but after that, I was like, oh, I don't know after that. Like, <laughs> um, So, for your number five, I had Endgame, and then four, I had Crawl. Three, ready or not. Two, once upon a time in Hollywood, and one, Jojo Rabbit. Wow. Oh wow! Wow, you're like <laughs> damn. So I threw you for a loop with John Wick. It yeah, like that, that's the, I, yeah. And as soon as you <laughs> yeah. said that, I was like, I should have known. God <laughs> damn it! Right, yeah. <laughs> the only movie on my list that we haven't talked about was Dolomite is my name. I thought that was that was uh, a fun. That's a fun. I've movie. heard nothing yeah. but really good uh-huh. stuff about that's that. Good. Well, yeah. yeah, but we watched Dolomite on this show. You can go back and listen to yeah. that episode. But I think it has a special meaning if you've seen yeah. Dolomite like or uh, the Human Tornado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No. Well, it's more like it's more um, fun. Yeah, it's more like a people coming together to do something. Yeah, like it's 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 uplifting and it's funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, God damn, Dolomite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that brings us to the most exciting portion of our show, which is which is the most disappointing portion. Yeah. Of our show, yeah. Well, so is that what we're saying? Are we, are we going with the worst movie of the year, catastrophically bad? Yeah, well, it's, or it's, disappointing. It's, I, it's, I disappointing it's, is worse. Like, How about we all disappointed by a movie? That's the worst. Why don't thing, we all just so. say what it is for us if it's the well, worst or it's the most okay. disappointing? Okay, uh, Colin, I think we have the same one. Okay, so I, I'm, on pr- the count of, I, I'm I, okay on my list. I also guessed what I thought your worst ones were going to be. I just didn't say them yet because okay, yeah. Right, yeah, but I did guess first. your worst, and I I pretty no yours is different. I confident Collins is different than yours, Sean. I don't I know. So. Yeah, I'm thinking back to early early well, 2019. This is the, so so at this, uh-huh. <laughs> like, I know what yours is. I know so what at Collins the same is. Same time, I want us to say it. Okay, uh, so we're so doing three, two, one. Yeah, so three, we're going two, on one or no, one three, and then go. Two, one, go. Okay. All right. Uh, three, two, two one, one, class. class. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like that's okay. what it has to be because well, you were yeah. angry about oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still am because I was sitting there going like, was the worst movie The Dead Don't Die? I'm like, that might be the worst movie, but actually, no, I'm going to take that back because even in my justification, like even though it's a, a technically worst movie, M. Night Shyamalan's Glass is worse because... It retroactively made me feel worse about <laughs> the my last time when I picked Split. I'm like, no, yeah. de- Get Out is yeah. my number one now. <laughs> right, you know, yeah. uh, which is just shocking. I had so much hope built up in that so thing much over hope. 20 years, right? For Unbreakable. I loved that movie. Uh, then Split came out as like the the shadow sequel to Unbreakable, and he's yeah. starting his own cinematic universe, and like that character, the Kevin Wendell Crumb, you know, character is awesome. Yeah. What's it gonna be like when he puts them together in a film? And I followed the making of it. This is why it's you know, I mean, like your mileage may vary, yeah. but you know, um, and then when when that movie came out. It was like, uh, oh, I mean, he was kind of the Ryan Johnson of his own fucking <laughs> shit. And I sat there going like, you know, I gave M. Night Shyamalan, he's been lost to me for years. Mm. And then, uh, you know, because gotcha everybody back. was like, yeah, the visit. And I'm like, I didn't care for the visit either. That's Neither still M. Night Shyamalan. Really? No. And that's just me, you know. And then, um, and then Split came along and I'm like, this is the guy who's been suppressed for so many years and just hasn't been able to have a voice and Blumhouse came in and gave him the fuck and said, give us the, and he did it. And it was awesome. And I was like, this is the most phenomenal fucking thing. Best movie experience I had that year. This is the worst movie experience I had this year, and I can't believe it came from the same guy. Right? How he could- a mere two years apart too. Every like, fucking decision Jesus. that he made was to undermine his own shit. It wasn't even like somebody else coming in and doing it. No. He did it himself. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what are you doing? No, no, like all he this Ryan stuff. Ryan Johnson, his own he, stuff. Ryan Johnson, his own stuff. <laughs> he was the first Ryan. No, he wasn't. He was the second Ryan Johnson. Right? It came after. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. I just could not fucking believe so the, the, you know, the, 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 the fact he would take his characters and, well, I mean, I guess I said it right. He undermines what made them something in the first place. We sat down here, Sean and I, I think yeah. like, uh, 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 the, you two had gone home. Yeah. We were very drunk. 
Mm-hmm. And we were talking about this movie. The whole thing, yeah. And we made, we came up with like point by point, like this is the it. better version of this movie. Yeah. And now I don't remember what oh, the no. fuck and it we, was. We did it too. We it, had yeah, it. It's you like don't the, remember? I am shocked. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had because it was like, oh yeah, the, like this is what this character needs and feels and you know wants, and yep. this is how it all plays out. And you know, and we, I think we made it would have made Glass uh, the Elijah Price character like a bigger deal yes. than he was in his own fucking movie. Yeah. But it would have paid off both uh, Unbreakable Man and the beast uh, um uh, but yeah everything even the way it was shot i'm like yeah you know uh, uh, uh james mcavoy i'm i was embarrassed for him <laughs> yeah <laughs> like wow you're just not doing this right at all <laughs> no they're just like you put him that that beast character belongs in the the dark hallways yeah, of the yeah, yeah, yeah. of the zoo not out in the open no, go, broad ooh, daylight ooh, ooh, yeah, I'm like, yeah. You, then you're just an idiot out you're there ta- fl- you're oh. sapping him of his power yeah. you're taking all that mis- <laughs> mystery away yeah yeah it was it awful <laughs> awful how you, what you did to to david dunn his yeah. ending yeah what an insult to yes. that character <laughs> yes holy shit and then at the very end well i mean i thought the uh we we're in agreement that right now it's just overlapping like you don't get yeah, a second you're turn. Talking, this, is yeah, this is this is, yeah, this is yeah, also yeah. sean go through this yeah. again no, this, this is, is also this is sean's co- i'm just most yeah. disappointing movie of the like, year you guys go just, yeah. i i thought yours was going to be child's play that would have oh, been i worse yeah that's, that's the one that kind of the more broke my heart was glass oh mm-hmm. but yeah i thought the um the idea of psychoanalyzing your characters and trying to convince them that they aren't here I, like i just i couldn't it broke my brain we, i'm like we, we i know, can't we this doesn't 20 work years of These, saying yeah, that they are yeah proof. they know who proof. they are <laughs> they don't have to have someone suddenly show up and go like oh you know what uh you only thought you had superpower yeah uh but yeah i'm like no 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 they, they, they fucking bent metal <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Objectively. You got shot uh, with a shotgun. You're doing pretty okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we have proof this is, this exists, you exist, you are who you think you are. Yeah. We went through the shit. So I just couldn't. you didn't think and you were, were who you were. And spend, like, most of the movie, like, trying to, like, oh, maybe, maybe they aren't, like, uh, thinking that they aren't the, I'm like, what, uh, uh. That rage. Rage. The rage is, rage is coming back. The, the other rage is the very ending of the movie with the uploading of the footage. Oh, that does doesn't a, spoiler territory. Uh, that's, does, all, that's all I'll say. But it does the same thing that that. See, this is this is the fundamental thing that that M Night Shyamalan and Ryan Johnson don't understand about hero stories. Mm. The hero, right, of the story is someone that we, as the viewer, aspire to be. Right, you want to be as good as that character. Right, but uh, both of these guys in the end of their movies go like, no, 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 no. Anybody can be a hero. You can be a hero. You watching this movie can be a hero if you do all that. I'm like, not what I want. That I need to feel the the aspirational qualities of the character. If you strip all that away from them and go like, no, 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 we're going to diversify that, and anybody can have it. It's not the same. You know, it doesn't have the same strength. And be we want to be you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what people keep missing, especially from like even the new Superman movies. I mean, you know, it's like that's kind of the the aspirational quality of a hero who has a true north who does things because he is just that you know this is who he is yeah no not luke skywalker he throws shit away yeah not david dunn and and you know uh. (laughs) yeah and and i gotta tell you like m night Shyamalan and i think jordan peele unfortunately are on like a similar career trajectory (laughs) and i hope i still have faith in jordan peele right it's still early and so I think it's third movie. It's normal to have a sophomore slump. It's sure. okay. It's, but I'm yeah. I'm surprised at how many people are considering us to be like one of the greatest movies of the year. Oh yeah, I've heard that I'm, a lot. I'm shocked. I've heard that a lot. Yeah, because I'm like, no, he fit. That feels like his M Night Shyamalan like mm-hmm. misstep. Mm-hmm. You know, it's his Lady in the Water. Mm-hmm. But oh, Jesus, he can still come back. Yeah. Oh yeah, because he's got the goods. Yeah. But all right, mm-hmm. that's uh, yeah, glass. Is, I don't glass. know. You got anything? Yes. No, that's, more that's glass. pretty much it. I just <laughs> no, I, 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 if my reader that ending like it's like they don't understand how uh information passes through oh that too to yeah just that pic- yeah yeah it's just like oh we uploaded it five seconds ago and every single person around you on your phone is getting it like because it went to youtube 
you're insane. You're absolutely insane to think that that's how it works. And to just pull back. <laughs> I like, like that that's the, the back, problem you have is the technological it is, process. You pull back on the phone and this, uh, you pull back on the shot and everyone's like looking at the phone like, oh, did you see this? It's just like, what world do you live in? Gossip girl. <laughs> yeah. Not that world. <laughs> but what world do you live in where you think that this uh, this information is going to get to these people this quick and also that anybody's going to believe it in a world where right. you can just make right. anything and put it on YouTube oh, and God, make that's it right. look real? Yeah, the whole end of that movie is like, it oh. It is that. It's just like, what makes <laughs> yeah, but you the think secret that society too. Oh, like, oh, uh, Jesus. Uh, oh, oh, it's a terrible fucking movie. Done, done. Glass. All right. Fuck. See, this is why it's the worst. This yeah. is like, did this. It creates the rage. The listeners just got to look into what it's like when Ooh. the mics go off and you guys stay up. <laughs> Late all night drinking because yes. uh-huh. like you guys forgot we were podcasting for a minute there and you yeah. were just like this was the on your shit. late night oh, rant yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so I say we guess what Michaela's worst movie is she- on like a yeah, three, a two, two, one. Two. everything she's seen though <laughs> name everything you saw this year no no no, 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 no. no. Gotta go with I, the- I did I ask you guys everything you saw this year before I made all three of your lists I know did that shit all from memory I'm gonna uh, okay I'm gonna uh, pet three, cemetery two, one. pet cemetery. We already did an episode on it. I'm not going to talk about it again. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's one of the worst ones this year, but like we've covered a lot of the bad stuff this year. I see a lot of people defending that movie too. And you know what? You're wrong. You are wrong. (laughs) That's, yeah, that's definitely the worst Stephen King adaptation this year. It it is well, better. The Dark than Pet Tower Cemetery. was the year before, right? right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, this year yeah, we got what three, four, if you count in the tall grass. Yeah, yeah. in the tall grass, it's like middling. That's yeah. all right. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. So my worst of the year is Wounds, uh. which is starring Army Hammer, Zazie Beetz, and Dakota Johnson. Um, Army Hammer is a bartender who like works in New Orleans, and uh, some teenagers come into the bar, and they like. Some, a scuffle happens and someone leaves their phone behind and he takes the phone home with him, tries to like get into contact with who left the phone and weird body horror stuff starts happening. It's a really cool premise that just like completely collapsed in mm. on itself. It, and I don't, I don't understand how this movie got these three list people. And I've just recently found this movie cost $20 million and it went st- straight to Hulu and it was that for the above the line talent I, you say? It had it's Army been. Hammer Army who? Hammer Zazie Beats and Dakota Johnson mm. She's um, pulling in that 50 shades money I know can they be 20 million dollars between I, uh, probably yeah I mean the, the thing is this movie looks like dog shit so the fact that it's 20 million dollars like the special effects are really rough looking in this so I'm like where all is all there's two locations in the whole movie like it's at his at the bar and his apartment and that's mm. it they don't go anywhere else so it's uh, this uh, this movie frustrated me so much. It it has two B plots that are constantly at odds with each other that just don't work. Like there is this like trans dimensional paranormal uh, ritual horror body horror going on that like, but there's also a relationship drama and like it'll take big detours to spend a lot of time in this relationship drama with like nothing horror related happening and mm. then it'll be like then this weird body horror thing happens it never fully establishes its mythology it doesn't really explain why anything's happening or how it like moves from person to person and it seems completely arbitrary and then just ends with an an inciting incident like what would it be the start of another movie like this movie just ends with and it feels the most oh, it's just so unnatural the way it ends it's just like the most exciting thing you could imagine happening in this movie finally happens and it just then it just like cuts to black and it's it's not a resolution it doesn't even make any sense because the mythology we've set up doesn't make any sense and like th- these three a-list people like just signed on to this and i just don't know what they saw in it especially because it didn't get a big release it didn't really get a lot of press like i don't know what is this like a money laundering movie or something because that's uh, what it feels it was like, like a film festival movie that hulu picked up yeah you know, right yeah who's the director on this you uh know, i can't remember his name Let me or see what they do- really have done before i didn't recognize anything okay. they had done before but i mean i've I heard it talked it about there's been some people who have recommended it as like you know one of the best movies of the year too but. i babek and vari who, mm. who directed it i don't like i don't recognize anything okay. he's done but it, babu frick that's who directed it's it yeah. ba- babu. it'd be a much more delightful movie if babu had dir- had directed it it's just like i'd heard such good things about it and that's why i went out of my way to watch it and then like i just like wanted to throw my phone through the tv at the end because it was a cool premise that just like didn't finish the movie hmm. And like it's yeah, a twenty million dollars, I have no idea where the fuck it went because mm. it's not on the screen. It had to have been talent. It had to have been like, yeah, I'm not going to make any money off this once it comes out, so I need all the money up front or something. Like, it's just ugh. 
Army Hammer, you can see his butt in it if it does anything for you. So, you know. Not for Colin. That's, no, that's, like, the, that's like the best thing I can say about it. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Holly you got my interest just now. I'm not going to Holly's lie. like, well, maybe no. I'll, like, you know, scroll. I'll watch it at like three speed until I get to that I was that like, that sounds right. awful. And then you got to that. I was like, oh, oh yeah. Well, oh, and Dakota Johnson. It was good. <laughs> Dakota Johnson makes the most baffling acting choice in this movie. That's what she I just hear. like That's mumbles. What I heard about it, yeah. She never fully opens her mouth. She's like, I don't think she has a scene outside the apartment at all. She's just monotone and like mumbling the whole movie and doesn't Weird. have, yeah. And I feel I like, like I want to watch this movie. It's, <laughs> I mean, you can if you if you want, but I'm I, gonna love it. You know, you might. <laughs> no, nah, I'll probably. I think it's she, train wreck, she's but. calling it the worst movie of the year. That's a stern warning. Yeah, but watch. that's a challenge oh, to Sean. Not, that's not how my brain works. Sean sees that as a challenge. So I that's right. I heard. Ooh, I heard. Cats yeah. is like one of the worst movies of the year. Oh, I guarantee Sean. It is. Cats. Sean wants to see it now. I kind of want. I want to see the <laughs> fucked up version you were talking about. That sounds great. I want to see some fucking glitchy ass cats on the screen. Mm-hmm. Although I hear it gives people migraines. I don't. Want, I don't want to go to a fucking <laughs> musical and get a migraine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Holly, what is your worst slash most disappointing movie of 2019? Mine is definitely the most disappointing. It's absolutely not the worst movie. Pet Cemetery. I, is it a beautiful day in the neighborhood? <laughs> no. I was like, if that's not in your top five, it must have been bad. So no, it must no, be the no, most. No. I, I enjoyed that movie. It just didn't quite do it for me. Hmm. Um, I I was debating between two. It was between Us, which did not win because I was very disappointed by Us. Um, the winner of my most disappointing is Joker. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. Yes. Okay. I know it's a hot. This might be a hot take. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the it's hottest very, of takes. It's very controversial. <laughs> oh I know. God. Holly, it's kind of twisted, isn't it? Isn't it a little fucked up. Yeah, I kind of love it. Um, not a bad movie. It's not a bad movie. Um, but I was very disappointed because there was so much hype behind this movie. All I kept seeing was like critics love it. It's a favorite at all the film festivals. Fans love it, and all that fucking hype is what I think did it for mm, me. It's mm. because I went into it thinking this is going to be Oscar movie. This is going to be the movie of the year. Cause that's what I had heard. And, um, probably is going to get, some Oh, I guarantee it is, but <laughs> that's not fu- the fucking movie I watched. I, I, it's not at all. I, I okay. I, I understand that everyone is saying that Joaquin Phoenix, like performance of a lifetime. I'll, I thought it was forced. I thought he was his performance was very forced. I'm not saying he didn't do a good job. I'm just it wasn't natural. Like, you know, I, I'm trying not to compare the Jokers, you know, but Heath Ledger's just felt fluid. Mm. It just felt like it just felt like it was an extension of him. Walking it's Phoenix fully realized when yes. he burst on the screen. Yeah. Yes. But I, mean, I guess that is the difference with the movie. This is the yeah. origin. Yeah. But that's the thing. That's my other fucking point is I did not want a Joker origin movie. I didn't want it. My instinct was I want the Joker to be a faceless villain. I want him to just be a lunatic. Just I don't want to know anything about him. I don't want to know where he came from. I just want him to be pure craziness. Right. I just that that's what I want. I don't want any emotion behind him. I want him to be the lunatic that's just harassing Gotham. That's what I want my Joker to be. That was my instinct going into it, but I gave it a shot. My instinct was correct. I do not need a Joker origin story. Hmm. I don't need it. I uh, I felt like the story didn't really know which way it wanted to go. I felt like someone wanted to create a movie about a man with severe mental illness. And then they also wanted to shove it in the DC universe. Mm-hmm. Like, I felt like it was two separate things. I felt that. Right? Like, it's not the Joker. It's a Joker. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because it wasn't my Joker. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sure someone will say, like, oh, maybe that was intentional because it's conflicted just like he is. I, that's fucking <laughs> bullshit. No. It felt like two separate movies. And we we, uh, we see him like deteriorate into this mental into this state you know and and i i think they wanted it to be his morphing into the joker but it doesn't work because he's going into this he's like crumbling into himself and then all of a sudden bam he's the joker he's on a talk show he has total self-awareness. He has a plan. That wasn't the movie I was just watching. Mm. The movie I was just watching, he was crumbling into himself with no like feasible thought of what was happening. And then all of a sudden, he's talking to Robert De Niro and be like, I know exactly who I am and why I'm here. 
who did where did that guy come from? That's mm. not the movie I was watching. So it was, it, everything from the talk show on was just I, I was checked out. I was like, this is taking a turn that does not make any sense to me. It, yeah, well, I'll agree with you on the talk show thing because right. I thought that was like it just didn't feel like it came from the like the whole movie tries to set up this real world. Right. You know, scenario. Yes. And then the talk show is like, this would never happen anywhere on planet right. Earth. Uh, like the way that it happened. And right. Robert De Niro's miscast in that movie. Absolutely. That's terrible. I mean, I get that they're riffing on the king of comedy. Right. Sure. But yeah, that's he, miscasting. Yeah, he yeah. shouldn't have been in that role. Yeah. No. <clears throat> and there's another little plot point, which we can't reveal because right. of spoilers. But that's like. I mean, a lot of people that are forgiving it. I'm like, I can't forgive it. I, I like, can't. That, That's I mean, why I, I said, like, I dislike it as much as you did. But, well, you know, even that was like, that you can't do that and I'm get like, away with it. That's why, from then that. on, I was checked out. Like, yeah. I just, I can't, I can't buy into it. I I feel like, I don't know, maybe, maybe I, I need, maybe I need more separation with my comic book movie i felt like it was too real maybe they blurred the lines that's a little what i was too gonna much. say just like you want that distance from that. maybe so like i need i i need it to not be so realistic or so gr- rooted sure. in real world things maybe maybe that's what i need i don't know but it just yeah i i, I don't see the hype about it um maybe it was my own fault for like it, it not being something i wanted in the first place but yeah, it, I just I don't see the hype. I don't think it works very well. Um, I think as an independent movie, if it had just been a movie about a guy with mental illness, it might have been a, yeah. a decent movie. Yeah, it wasn't called Joker. Yeah, it was just about a clown. I get you because that's yeah. kind of where I was at exactly. with it. Exactly. And I, yeah. I, you know, I will fully admit that the moment when the Joker shows up and and he's dancing down the stairwell with that music playing, like. Mm-hmm. I was a little excited. I'll admit it. He goes up the stairs until that moment. Then he's always coming down the stairs. It's true. It's an art film. <laughs> Todd Phillips is a real auteur, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Well, there All is right. shit that he's doing in the movie. I mean, that is like that's one why, of those. That's yeah. why I said I'm not saying it's a bad movie. It's definitely not the worst movie of the year, but it was my most disappointing mm-hmm. movie of the year. Joker. <laughs> Joker. Joker. <laughs> All right. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised, actually, this is the shortest of our best and worst of. I think so. Yeah. The, the, the worst movies is always the most fun, because yeah. then you can yeah, like, so really you can tear into Dunk it. Dunk on stuff. Because the yeah. rest of it, you're like, well, I didn't like that as much as you did, but you know, I'm going to, you yeah. know, right. it's, it's your favorite movie. Um, next week, though. No, we're there's per- a unity and hatred. That's right. <laughs> uh, next week, we are going to watch. Uh, okay, so, so oh. we have been uh, collecting your votes. It's that time Indeed. of the year. Yeah, that's right. Yay. We're, it's we're, your time of the year. It's your time. It's, it's your voice. Yeah. Wonderful. So the way that we've done this is uh, we put out a poll uh, on our Facebook page. Thank you all for voting. Thank you both you. suggested Thank you for and voting yes. the movies and voted on them. And so now, uh, basically, uh, it, we don't even need a tiebreaker because I was looking at the uh, the totals today, and there are clear uh, winners. So we are going to watch over the next four weeks. Four movies that have been voted on by you, uh, starting with the 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 uh, the fourth. Right. Okay. And I haven't. This is. We don't the, know what this is. Only I know what they are. Um, okay. So here we go. You ready for this? Next week we are watching the classic 1987 motion picture Jaws: The Revenge. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's do it. Thank you for Yay. that. <laughs> All right. I'm excited. Sean's very excited. <laughs> oh, right. God. I love Godzilla Sharks. This is going to be great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And unfortunately, I watched this. Like, I hadn't seen it in years, and then I saw it recently. That's your fault. Yeah. I know. Oh, Colin has a knack for doing, doing that. I know. Yeah. You do. Yeah. So uh, it's Jaws the Revenge next week on Chosen Saturday by you. Night Freak Chosen Show. Chosen by you, listener. Chosen by you. Uh, Happy New Year. And we'll see you in 2020. Jaws the Revenge. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.